VHS files contain spoilers, adult content, and harsh language. Listener discretion is advised. It's showtime. It's showtime. It's showtime. Welcome to the VHS Files Podcast with Jenny Lou. So what do you want to do tonight? Jason. What, what about pizza and movie night? Eric. I want to rent a movie. And Josh. I want to go to a good video store so I can get a good movie. And this is the movie of the week. Let's get this pizza movie night started. Yeah, we're back! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> hubba, 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 money, 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 who do you trust? <laughs> How's everybody doing? Tonight we have Mr. Nathan Simmons from Two Drinks and a Haunting back on the show. Welcome, hey. Nathan. Hey, how's it hey, going, Nathan? guys? I, uh, I wore a Prince t-shirt to uh, commemorate the true star of Batman 89. <laughs> yes, the purple one. So how's everybody doing tonight? Oh, man. Sorry, I just yelled. <laughs> <laughs> you I asked gotta get already? my ear back in my lungs. I'm good here. We're fine, Josh. Stop asking. I'm thrilled. Thrilled? This is, yeah. I mean, genuinely, when you told me the concept for the VHS files, when you guys were getting started, this was, I think, the first thing I brought up was, uh, it was either this or Big Trouble in Little China, where I was like, if you do either of these movies, I have to be a guest. Yeah. Like, there's, it's not, <laughs> there's no negotiation <laughs> about this. I mean, like, the movie that invented the summer blockbuster as we know it now in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> genuinely, like it's so crazy when you think about like how huge this movie was and it kind of changed how movies were merchandised even like that you like Batman was everywhere. Yeah. Uh, even a couple of years later, everyone was still trying to like ride the Batman train. And for some reason, the the consensus among Hollywood was, oh, pulp characters. Yeah. So that's why we got all of those. Like we got Dick Tracy a few years later. What, that was on everything from like mugs to T-shirts and yep. breakfast cereal. Yeah. One of the first things I think of when when I think of Batman 89 is the marketing. And that was such a just such a a. a striking campaign with just the the bat symbol and 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 all the the mystery leading up to it and that kind of stuff yeah oh absolutely I and mean, it was huge before the movie came out the it, poster was yeah. just the symbol it's wild and not the symbol he wears in the movie oddly enough no yeah <laughs> yeah oh. the weird little pointy one we're gonna get into this my friends because i've got lots to say here <laughs> this is, had to have been the first vhs my family owned or that i have was con- cognizant of us owning right <laughs> the vhs tape had a commercial for the Warner Brothers store catalog Mm -hmm. like before the movie (laughs) like it was literally like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck like hawking like (laughs) Batman jackets and copies of the shooting script yeah well I mean as we get into the movie I'm going to talk about branding a lot more but yeah I mean like sure everywhere at this time and I think that's why as as a nine-year-old right around this time like I was so pumped about Batman is because they really promoted the hell out of it I want to play something real quick that all of us probably did see on TV around this time and uh I just this just watching this gets sends chills up my back and makes me feel like a kid again the adventure continues now with Batman the serial it's the serial nothing can slow him down nothing can stop him from bringing it to you it's here a smashing taste smashing taste a honey nut flavored part of your complete breakfast and it looks like Batman. just just the crunches. it's captain, it's right? captain crunch, yeah. crunch it pretty much just yeah. is yeah i mean that's what it was no berries <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I remember eating a few bowls of that as a kid. That, that was good stuff. But the problem is, it's the thing is with the Captain Crunch and that, you still tears the roof of your mouth up and you can yeah. feel the strings of skin hanging down yeah, afterwards. Yeah, just chomping so. on batarangs. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they play the scene of, of Batman's mass murder uh, spree in that <laughs> serial <Yeah>. commercial. <laughs> yeah, Batman's act of domestic terrorism at the <laughs> hour mark. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and get into the proper introduction here. The movie of the week. If you haven't guessed it by now, it's Batman 89. <laughs> Directed by Tim Burton, was just coming off Beetlejuice, had done Pee-wee's Big Adventure and Beetlejuice at this point. Um, Who's that guy? <laughs> and uh, we've talked about him already. And then after this, he would go on to do Edward Scissorhands, um, but and Batman Returns. 
because of this. I mean, legitimately, this movie was so huge. They were like, yeah, if you want to make your weird scissor movie, let's <laughs> here's a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. And this this is at a time when Tim Burton. I mean, I think I think this, along with Beetlejuice, really is what got Hollywood going. Okay, this is a guy that needs to mm-hmm. have you know. I mean, and he's got a unique vision, and they really just kind of let him go into his own little unique style after mm-hmm. that. Um, even though he was bringing it in Beetlejuice and and kind of in this as well, although he had the DC universe to to kind of draw from here, but. Um, <laughs> This was released June 23rd, 1989, with a budget of $35 million. How much do you guys think this thing brought in at the box office? Oh, shit. I actually used to know. $500 million, Something like that? $411.6 million. That's right. <laughs> Hell of a guess, Jason. Hell of a guess. On the nose. <laughs> yeah. This was released amongst the likes of Do the Right Thing. One of Eric's favorite movies, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Hell yeah. One of Jason's favorite movies, The Karate Kid 3. And <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> and the sequel to a movie we've already talked about, Ghostbusters 2, yeah. came out around this time. So, don't get me started on that either. Hey, in license well, to kill, there. right? Like, or was it that same summer? I don't know, it might have been the same summer, it wasn't in the okay. same month though. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so but let's uh talk about 1989 a little bit, Eric. We're sending you back. Well, Josh, in 1989, a Michigan farmer found a camera attached to balloons in his field. It contained images of what appeared to be a mutilated corpse, leading to a year-long FBI investigation. Turns out it was footage from a Nine Inch Nails music video down in it that was filmed 200 miles away. (laughs) I love that song. That's That's an amazing song. Yeah, I didn't... It totally yep. makes sense it now. It all checks out. So, uh, okay, here's a spooky one to honor our guest today. Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis oh. has not appeared on stage since 1989. Uh, he was playing Hamlet, and he claimed to have seen the ghost of his own father during a performance. I mean, DDL's pretty method. If he's playing Hamlet, he's going to see He's going to be seeing ghosts, ghosts for sure. <laughs> uh, after winning a record four consecutive Emmys for his role on Night Court, John Larroquette asked not to be considered in 1989. I love Night Court, but what was going on in the 80s where John Larroquette is drowning in Emmys? Right, and he's not even like, he wasn't even like yeah. the lead. I mean, he was great. He was great, but I mean, Jesus Christ. They're bringing that show back, by yeah, the way. Starring oh, that's John right. Larrick, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Starring. <laughs> he's back for he more Emmys. Fitting <laughs> enough. Uh, and finally, one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time is released in 1989. Hit it, Josh. Saying what to do when sucker lunatics start digging and chewing. They don't know that the soul don't go for that potholes in my lawn and that goes. I wish this stuff was on Spotify. Which I concentrated so hard <laughs> Please on get this stuff on Spotify for me. <laughs> De La Soul's not on Spotify. Uh, only the stuff that they self-produced, I think. They have some oh, label problems with the old stuff, so uh, it's not on there. Most good artists do have label problems. Hey, Prince. Speaking of Prince. <laughs> All right, I want to play the trailer for Batman 89 real quick. It's basically just a sizzle reel. There's no music. Right. It's, it's so <laughs> yeah, wild. They like, threw it together. And what do you do for a living? And even some of the shots they use in this trailer are not in the movie. Right, like they're alternate takes or like different angles. Audiences at this, at this point were, you know... They knew Batman from the 66. Mm-hmm. So this was like, whoa, I can't make you know? Either. I've got a very important meeting today. Don't kill me! Don't kill me, Don't kill me, man! I mean, they even sound like they're on a sound stage yeah. right there. See, it doesn't have the same punch. <laughs> Do you think there were audiences in 89 that were like, holy shit, Robert Wool's in this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not the best trailer in the world by any means, but, it's, but it was enough to get me so mm-hmm. goddamn excited to see this movie. It was it was like nothing I had ever experienced. Sure. Before. Well, you figure uh, in 
like my lifetime, since mine started in 77, the really the only big superhero movie you had sure. was Superman and then a few of the sequels. We get our first big time superhero movie where we're old enough to, to mm-hmm. remember it and see the commercials and actually go to the theater and see it. Well, I really want to so, get into I mean, the nostalgia of this. I mean, yeah. this is this is by far the first time I remember. I, I've talked about going to see Beetlejuice as one of the first movies I'd ever seen in the theater. But this was the first movie where I I was throwing a fit mm-hmm. wanting to see this movie oh, in the theater and like was so excited. The trailers, the marketing, everything about it had me so pumped. And I, I was a big fan of the Batman TV show, mm-hmm. Batman 66, all of that. Fond memories of me and my cousin after school on the weekdays watching Batman 66 and the Batman TV episodes. And this movie just looked like everything I wanted in a Batman movie. So I was so fucking excited, but I, and I finally convinced my mom, this is before my mom and my stepdad got together. So at this point it was still just me and my mom. And I finally, like there are a couple of movies I convinced my mom to take Mm. me to ghostbusters two was one of them, which we brought up earlier, but this one was unfortunately one. I didn't convince her to take. Although I fought the, I fought, I fought the fight and actually remember going and getting in the car and and getting ready to go to the theater. And then realizing you couldn't drive because you were a child. And and then you said shields. (laughs) (laughs) Shields. No, 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 no. I mean, my mom was driving, uh, but a thunderstorm had come through and she gave me the excuse of, oh, well, the movie might cut out if it's raining, so we're not going to go to the movie. I was so heartbroken, did not get to see this movie until it hit VHS. Yeah, can't you just have the car auto drive you yeah. to the theater? Hello. Yeah, I mean Bruce I mean, Wayne was rocking a Tesla back in '89. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually have that in my notes. This is the Batmobile, the original <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> so, uh, Nathan, how old were you in '89? Okay. Were you born yet? Yes, I was. <laughs> I was. So, uh, when you talk when you talk about nostalgia for a movie, for me, this is the nostalgic movie. It came out right before I turned a year old. I watched this movie so many times as a child that it is baked into my DNA as a person. It is one of those movies that as I've gotten older, I see the cracks in it, like from a filmmaking screenwriting perspective, and it doesn't change how much Mm -hmm. I love it at the same time. If anything, it just kind of my, my like love of filmmaking has grown with my appreciation for this movie and it's kind of evolved over time but like i watched this movie over and over again as a kid i probably shouldn't have i mean genuinely like watching it recently i uh with my girlfriend who was seeing it for like the first time all the way through she was like this is not a children's movie um (laughs) oh it's not and to the to the point where i told her (laughs) i was like three or four years old like mimicking the joker and i called my dad a gruesome son of a bitch (laughs) i said come here you gruesome son of a bitch bitch. Um, and he was like no you can't do that uh so (laughs) he threw you off a cathedral this was he did yeah (laughs) yeah and i was wearing glasses no it was uh it it was so strange because it, it it informed so much of what I love about movie making. I love, I love the soundtrack. It got me into, it got me into Prince. I'm the only member of my family that likes Prince. And <laughs> like, like this movie is like a huge part what? of that. Wow. It got me into Batman as a character. Batman's still one of my favorite characters in fiction. I, it, you know, it, it kind of becomes uh, cool as you get older to say like, Oh, there's, you know, Batman's just, you know, just a jerk or whatever, but he's, <laughs> you're so, you're so right. There's, there's such a backlash against Batman. It's dumb. Yes. There's a reason this character has endured for over 80 years. <laughs> and uh, and th- this movie kind of like lays the blueprint for a lot of what every superhero film for good or ill will do from here on out. Um, I didn't see this in the theater because I was uh, in the womb when it uh, was released. <laughs> the uh, No, no, sorry. I was, no, I didn't see this in the theater because I was a year old when it was released. My parents uh, went to go see okay. the film. Um, but I did go see Batman <sighs> Returns a few years later, which I definitely shouldn't have seen as a child. Uh, <laughs> and if uh, if you guys ever do that as an episode, I would love to come back and talk about that experience. It's going to happen. But I, I just, this movie is just, it's one that's ingrained in my 
my soul to the point where I just, I was listening to the score today. I just bought it on vinyl because I'm a real one. And the, uh, I, I, there were bits where certain parts of the music, I could see the sequence in my head. Like there's yeah, a weird yeah. little, oh yeah, weird little bit of percussion and like a, like a, a wind instrument in one of the tracks. And I was like, oh, this is when they're cleaning out access <laughs> chemicals. Like I was literally, like, <laughs> I just can't, I can't separate that in my head. Um, so yeah, I, I, I love this movie so much and it's, it's a, it's a glorious, weird, kind of a mess and i'm so excited to talk to you guys about it <laughs> what i gather from what he just said is that he really likes this movie it's okay I, I, <laughs> it's, it's okay <laughs> two out of five you said it's a work of fiction in this real life in this in batman yeah real? Well, he is. we're talking real. about dawn of justice right <laughs> <laughs> yes that's right yes <laughs> well i mean eric you're a big comic book guy and i mean you've been reading for a long time i mean how how important was batman to you and how important was this movie at the, at the time I don't know when I started reading comic books. I just feel like I always did. And Batman has always been a favorite of mine. Batman and Spider-Man. Those are my guys. <laughs> and, um, yes. you know, I, yeah. Also, around this time in comics, they took started taking a darker tone with Batman as well. So for, for me, seeing a Batman that was like the comics was so cool, you know? Uh, the old campy stuff, very golden age or whatever you want to call it. it you know, it, that mm -hmm. was fun. I liked watching that stuff. Uh, but this was like, it, it felt like it was for me, you know, like just that, sure. that tone, that darker tone of it. Um, so yeah, it was definitely huge. And, you know, we're going to talk a lot, I'm sure about just the design in this movie um, of everything. Oh, yeah. It established such a look that has endured through so many things other incarnations of 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 the the property and specifically my favorite my personal favorite version of batman which is the animated series and uh you Same. know oh yes so much of that comes from this so much of the look of it and the feel yeah. of gotham and all that kind of stuff and uh yeah, oh, yeah. so absolutely it, it just just a really big movie for me as a kid and jason how about you I mean, most people who know me, I've always been a Marvel guy. I mean, I've read Spider-Man and anything Venom related since I was a kid. But I think because as I got into Venom later, the darker side, and then this movie came out, I was like, this guy's pretty cool. He's dark, and he's just like, he's the shit out of people with his bare hands. He's not super, he's not super powered. He wasn't bitten by a mutated radioactive bat or nothing like that. And then you're like, you know, he's a billionaire and he tries to do what's good and go out there and just pulverize freaking people every night. That's why I, th I think I got in there. I mean, as far as DC goes, it's Batman and I like the Flash. Yeah. So uh, Super Superman to me was too perfect, too goody, two shoes. You know, like bleh, it gets, it's too much. But uh, Batman, after this movie came out, definitely became a, a character for me that I fell in love with for years. And, but the main thing is because Batman brought us the Joker mm. and he's the main thing I really love about Batman is their conflict throughout comics and their history together yeah. is like, we don't have one without the other almost type thing. Well, so. and in a lot of ways, this movie is kind of a, a, a reaction to the, the Richard Donner, Richard Lester, Superman movies, you know, it's uh, showing an audience. We can do an, a dark noir kind of take on superheroes. We don't necessarily, and this movie's still very funny. Like there, there's, there is a camp oh, yeah. element to this movie with that Tim Burton can never avoid. I mean, that's why it took so long for the movie to get made was that people just knew Batman and superheroes in general as these kind of like campy bright figures. And it, it took yeah. a lot of convincing for a studio to even take a chance with a Batman movie. Jenny, do you have any distinct yeah. memories or anything of Batman at this time? I can't remember if I saw this in the theater or not, but I definitely had a Batman thing when I was younger. <laughs> um, Same girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have a Michael Keaton thing. <laughs> Is this the Thirsty Jenny seg segment already? We're every week. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I watched Adam West Batman mm -hmm. uh, on TV every day after school. Yes. Same bat time, same, same bat, bat channel. channel. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I know that I saw this movie when I was young. I just can't remember if I convinced my parents to take me to see it or not. But what I did convince them to do 
is that Halloween, Batman was going to be at the mall <gasps> for like mall trick or treat. What? Holy shit. And so in my mind, it was Batman. Mm-hmm. Like, right. I mean, I was Batman seven, so is was at like, the mall. Batman is going to be at the mall. <laughs> and I made them take me. And I have this picture of me meeting Batman, and I am about to burst because I'm so excited. Where was uh, he set up? It, it, at like, I'm picturing the Dark Knights, probably at what, like Camelot Music? <laughs> we had this big, like, fountain in the middle, and like, just all these characters were in the circle around. Batman him. was standing in a dark corner <laughs> of the mall. <laughs> Just, You're just talking about idiot. Batman at the mall, and all I'm picturing is Ben Wyatt on Parks and Rec yes. in the Batman costume. <laughs> <laughs> we, we brought up Prince doing the score. Mm. This, I mean, this is great, but I mean, I want to go ahead and get right into the movie at this point with this opening scene or the, the opening title sequence and Danny Elfman's score here. Yeah. And, oh. every, you know, the way they're winding through what looks like these caves and taverns and whatnot. And yeah. then as it zooms out, you see that it's just been going within this giant concrete bat I, you, symbol. There, there are moments of your life where you have very specific memories of like, I can remember yeah. myself. I remember sitting in the theater and watching that unfold and not knowing uh, it was the bat symbol. And then the, the reveal that it's the bat symbol. Like I can, I, that's the only brilliant. part of being there that I can remember, but yeah. You know, what's so strange about that opening is that it, it also still shows Hollywood's like reluctance to embrace comic books at that time. Because it actually, the credit that pops up is based on characters appearing in magazines published by DC <laughs> or something mm. like that. It's very, like, the wording is so strange, but it's literally just like, don't worry. Yeah, because comics comics would have just kids. brought in the wrong crowd. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, I mean, one thing about this movie is the whole aesthetic of this, mm-hmm. which the 50s feel that, that it comes in on is like, I wasn't expecting it the first time sure. I saw it. It looks yeah. otherworldly. It doesn't look like it exists yeah. in our world, you know. Gotham's design, like the whole design the of that weird, city, like, is amazing. Deco, everything's really tall. Mm-hmm. I, you know, we'll, we'll get to it later, but that cathedral is like two hundred stories tall. It's like the tallest cathedral yeah. ever made. It, <laughs> <laughs> so there's a the, in the original screenplay for, for Batman, the Sam Ham describes Gotham as it looks like hell burst up out of the ground. <laughs> wow. And, the the like the hero of this movie is Anton First's like production design. Like the yeah. thing that I love about you, you mentioned the Art Deco stuff, the weird gothic like statues, which kind of gets people give the production design in the Schumacher movies a lot of hell. But I actually love the giant statues mm-hmm. that are all over Gotham in those movies. Yeah. Um, but there's uh the, the, the most interesting thing to me is that it looks like the city has like instead of anything being demolished or like fixed up, it looks like they're always just bolting shit on. Like when you're yeah. inside the Flugelheim museum, <laughs> you know, yeah. clever. Uh, when you're inside the museum, there's a shot of the, uh, they're in like this ornate dining room, but there's like exposed piping and vents mm, and yeah. stuff. It's like, they've just tried to like, they just tried to renovate the industrial age and kind of just. Yeah. Like the, up. the entrance to the Fluheim museum has these vents on the front and there's constantly steam pouring out of yeah. them. So it's yeah. very, well, the, like, whole, the whole city looking. feels like yeah. it's underground, uh, you know, the, yeah. just the atmosphere. It's of like it, metropolis, uh, the, the movie metropolis. Right. It's all this German expressionistic stuff. It's really dope. <laughs> Yeah, but I just think it's cool because, like you said, like in the other Tim Burton movies, we get the use of like the miniatures mm-hmm. and the you know, the painted backgrounds. You can see a lot of that here, which that's over years. Like he uh, Nathan was talking about earlier, you know, production design. Mm-hmm. Later, as we watch it, we find the flaws in it, but it works for this time in 1989. It looks spectacular. To well, us. see, it was like, this effects is, wow. age, but design yeah. doesn't. Good design holds up, Correct. and even if. That, Even if you know you have miniatures and matte paintings and all that kind of stuff, it's still beautiful to look at. Right. And as a kid, I wasn't like, oh, this is all on a sound stage. They have three locations. You know, I mean, like, how many yeah. times do they drive by the monarch in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. The first time you see Batman in the movie, he's animated. That shot of him, yes. like that overhead oh, yeah. shot. I love, I love that. that. It looks so, so good. <laughs> So I mean, cool. it, it's it's like proto well, I mean, Batman the animated series. That shot. Our introduction to Batman here, you get to this this whole reference to kind of mirroring what happened to him mm-hmm. when he was a kid, and then oh, these that guys misdirect the, is so mm-hmm. good. Like it is yeah. like 
and I remember as a kid watching it, like thinking that that was where we were going to get the, the, the origin and the Genesis of all of this, but it takes this to turn. And then like, I mean, shot. I was thinking that last night, and I've seen this movie. <laughs> Do the kid a favor. Don't scream. <laughs> the bat. Oh, give me a break, will you? Johnny Gobbs got ripped and took a walk off a roof. No big <laughs> loss. <laughs> but Batman coming down. And way in the background, too. It's shot like a horror film. Yeah, yeah like he's 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 a predator. Michael Myers yes. coming out of the steam. Yeah. Uh, and And... All in this one little scene, you get all the great Batman stuff. You get fighting, you get gadgets, you get, you know, the the great silhouette of him in, in the shadows, all that stuff. You get it all he right there. He gets shot. Get shot, get back up. up. Yeah, everything. I mean, it, what an introduction. And then we get, I'm Batman. <laughs> and we'll never lose that ever. <laughs> it, it, everyone has to do their own I'm Batman. And also, as since this is a podcast, I have to say from a podcasting perspective, the thing that I respect about Batman is that he gets his plugs out like right away. Like the first thing he says is, I want you to tell all your friends about me. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come visit me on <laughs> patreon.com <laughs> slash vengeance. <laughs> Give me a five star review. Like- <laughs> Let's talk about, uh, sorry, uh, Keaton's Batman voice also is great. It's perfect. Yeah. It's really just his voice with a little bit of, you know, bass. I mean, aside from Kevin Conroy, I mean, it's literally the best Batman voice. You know, I want to go ahead and bring up Jack Nicholson, top billing here. He is the star of the movie. He is not Batman. I I remember distinctly as a kid thinking it was weird that the Joker was the first person listed on the cast list. And you know what's even better about that? Jack Nicholson was so smart the way he did his contract to do this movie because he had run right. He ended up making $50 million on this That's what he's living off of. (laughs) He still gets paid (laughs) out. He's still living off of He still gets paid out of anything, any iteration of his Joker anytime this movie is like re-released on Blu-ray or whatever. Um, he got like like a percentage of the gross and merchandising. Like no one was signing merchandising contracts back then. He was smart about this. I mean, him and his agent were like, "Hey, we're- well, in in many ways, in many ways, he is this movie. I mean, you know, he yes, he, oh yeah, he should be get top billing." Yes, absolutely. It should just be called Joker. Yeah, I mean, it should be just called Joker, not Batman. And, and the, the stigma of it comes from being a kid and thinking it's a Batman movie when it's really centered around the Joker. I mean, you kind of have that, you know, Batman's your hero, so you're defending the fact that he should be the star of the movie. But watching this now, and even watching it over the years, like mm-hmm. this is this is Nicholson's movie mm-hmm. for sure. Well, I mean, and and rightly so because he just he he's doing the most the whole time. Like genuinely, and I say this as a Jack Nicholson fan, I've never, I don't think I've seen him as into a role ever. <laughs> I mean, like he, he's, he loves every minute of that he, he's having so mm. much fun on oh, screen yeah. <laughs> and that's not a backhanded compliment. He's having a blast. Clearly. I was taken aback last night a little mm-hmm. bit watching it because that first 10, 15 minutes of him, the introduction of him, you know, the introduction to Grissom and the the whole espionage side of things sure. and the conversation they have. But your introduction to Jack Napier before he is the Joker <laughs> seems very like um, Chinatown yeah. Jack Nicholson. It's very reserved. He's not overbearing. He's not going over the top. But Jack Napier is scarier than the Joker. <laughs> To me, I genuinely think his think performance is scarier. <laughs> Always wanted one of those hats, just a straight oh. brim, round hats he wears. Brought you a snack. And that hat reminds me of the killing joke, too, which I, I, yeah, I don't know. Is that on sure. purpose? Yes. Yeah. That came out the year before. I think so. Yeah, they did take Batman was in like development hell for like mm-hmm. 20 years. And when he got there, then we had the killing joke right. and Dark the returns. Dark Knight yeah. returns. So they that's why it went more darker because Tim Burton actually Tim Burton actually got more interested in it because of these darker yeah. takes. And then you know you get that iconic hat, and then we see it here because uh, you know Eckhart sees it. Uh, that's a good shot too of that hat when Eckhart looks down the alley and you see that Eckhart's a dirty cop, and you just see that hat of Jack yeah. just standing there like this, and you're like, oh, that's very killing. The exchange between um, Eckhart and Jack right here mm-hmm. is really good too. Um, it, it it doesn't feel like you're watching a Batman movie at no. this point. It's like it's Goodfellas or something. <laughs> yeah, like a gangster flick from the fifties or yeah. something. Like it just has that feel to it. And it's not until later when he becomes the Joker that things really just get turned on their heads. Mm-hmm. Cause it seems to be pretty straightforward than other than the fact that you've got a vigilante guy out here is dressed up as a bat. 
taking out crime in the city. Which is a <laughs> it is an interesting choice why they why they felt they had to give the Joker a, a true identity for this. I mean, it, it's a, it's an odd take because it's not really something. You know, in the comics, they've kind of gone off of you know, he has a couple of different origins. Maybe one of them's yeah. true, whatever. Uh, but it, yeah, it's I don't know if that's because they felt the audience needed to be grounded or like in some way uh, for this character to not just come out of nowhere. Um, well, I think it's it, it might have yeah. something to do with what you brought up as well as them saying, you know, coming from magazines like they probably mm-hmm. didn't want to dissuade any kind of an audience and introducing us to a character a la like Heath Ledger's Joker mm-hmm. probably wouldn't have came off too well back in 89. Sure. So they they probably had to cement it in some sort of a, a personal reality That's for fair. people to be able to well, accept Well, his transformation, it. I fair. think, is part of the horror of the film. You know, without the, having that transformation in there, I think you'd be missing a little something. That's true. And the fact that Batman is indirectly or directly <laughs> responsible, depending on your read of that yeah, scene. I, before we go right. too far, I just wanted to mention that we've got Billy D. Williams as Harvey Dent. Harvey and, Dent. Uh, and, and we've got a, a largely uninvolved Commissioner Gordon for the for, yeah, for yeah. most of the film. You know, he kind of is just there. Which company you know? makes it through the trilogy. Yeah, he's he's in all of them, though. To the yeah. point where I've heard someone refer to this as the Pat Hingleverse. <laughs> <laughs> no, it should be uh, the Alfred, Alfred verse. Yeah, I mean, Michael Gothverse. <laughs> Especially coming from watching the Batman TV show in Batman 66, where Commissioner Gordon was fairly involved mm-hmm. with what Batman was doing there. He seems to really That's take kind a of a knock for this movie. I, I'm not going to knock it much. I, agree. But I, I, I prefer my my Gordon to be involved in in business he's yeah. such yeah. a great character i i mean as someone as someone who loves the books where gordon was yeah batman, right <laughs> like i'm one of the few defenders of yeah. that era of batman <laughs> like i yeah i'm right there with you i love commissioner gordon pretty progressive of them to have uh to cast a a, a black man as harvey dent too right i mean for 88 yes. he signed yeah. on with the understanding that he'd be two-faced in the sequel <laughs> yes uh, yeah i've heard that yeah but like he's he's so fun in that role because he has like I mean his delivery was you know we're gonna knock down their doors like he's <laughs> he's just so great. The bravado that these a lot of these actors bring to the roles they're playing is is kind of what makes. I wish a lot we could have movie. seen a, a two face with Billy D. Absolutely, that's true. I do have a question. All right, in this area where we're at in the movie, we meet Knox, the reporter. Who thinks that we could have done without Knox? And that's another movie? that's another screenwriting Hollywood thing is we need an audience surrogate, yes. which like yeah. is yeah. not necessarily I okay, so we could do without Alexander Knox, but he is a character that I love so much. I like him a lot. I think he's so great. And, it, and again, this is the I can't say anything bad about this movie, even though I know it doesn't entirely work. <laughs> So there's a lot of bad language in this Batman movie. Oh, Um, God, yeah. Including from Knox, who has one of my favorite line deliveries in the whole movie when the guy, like, draws the Batman sketch, and he goes, (laughs) what a dick. Like, he just, (laughs) yeah. It's so good. But he does have some great line delivery Mm -hmm. and some much-needed laughter, and he brings some laughter into the movie. And he he facilitates a lot of Vicky's side of the story also. Well, one of my favorite exchanges with him and Vicky is when they're talking, and they've just met each other, Mm -hmm. and they're getting ready to go do whatever, and he goes, "Um, Vale, were you marry me like he just <laughs> r- puts it right out there from the get-go yeah. like i'm attracted to you so i'm gonna go ahead and just let you know she, he says he says lunch maybe and she goes maybe and he goes i eat yeah. light <laughs> oh, i just liked i liked the very first thing he says oh, hello legs yep. well i'm reading your stuff and i'm reading yours you know too. he says uh <laughs> oh if you want me to pose nude you're gonna need a long lens but obviously that is not what he thinks it means and the, here's why vicky Vale's a boss bitch because her response is to show him that she's been in a war zone in the cordo maltese and he's like shit like <laughs> i actually see both sides of the knox argument because i when i was a kid i mm. i actually did not care for knox and i was just sort of bored mm. when he's on screen uh now i i like his presence more although i agree that he's not totally crucial to the story but he does give a mm-hmm. give someone for kim basinger to talk to about her theories and that kind of stuff otherwise 
you know, we'd just be mm-hmm. sitting with her taking notes or. I do love that she seeks him out though. Like I, I mean, I have my opinions about Kim Basinger's uh, performance in this movie. From a story perspective, I do like that she is, she has agent, she has more agency than many, oh, well, at least for the first half of the movie, she has more agency than yeah. many female characters in these types of films. She, she's, she's comes to Gotham city to find out about the Batman, which I kind of love. Well, I mean, I'm going to touch on this a little later, but Vicky is probably one of the biggest issues I have with this movie. Oh yeah. Especially as the movie goes on because of the way they set her up and where we end up with her at the end of the movie. It doesn't, I completely it doesn't agree. really work too well. Yeah. I did want to bring up, I mean, we've talked about Batman 66. We're talking about this now, and mm-hmm. this always seemed like the modern Batman movie to me. Yeah. We've even, we've gotten the Christopher Nolan movies and now we're moving on into the, the DCU stuff. And then we're getting the new one that's coming from Matt Reeves. This movie, I remember always felt fresh and watching it this time was the first time it's felt dated. It, it felt like, like it was dated and it felt like I was watching Batman 66. Like it felt like it had that kind of, there's a lot of that DNA for sure. Yeah. I don't know exactly what it was either. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's the fact that the the wardrobe and everything is set for the the fifties style and, and the way everything looks and even some of the acting kind of makes mm-hmm. me think that now. But it's just one of those where this is the first time this Batman movie hasn't felt like the modern Batman. It feels kind of time stamped. That's the thing about this movie is that it's it, it was meant to be cutting edge and it was and I think that there are elements of this film that we've just seen done better. So the stuff that like has been reiterated, maybe it doesn't feel as fresh. I mean, how many times yeah. are we going to see pearls fall down in a fucking right. alleyway? Before, yeah. you know, I, 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 I swear to God, if, if the Waynes die in the Matt Reeves Batman movie, I'm going to throw a chair at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> but this, I mean, this is really like, I mean, it's not knocking this movie at sure. all. I still think yeah. this movie has so much merit and was very groundbreaking for the time. It's just the first time that I felt like if I was a younger person watching this for the first time, it would probably feel boring. Well, it was like I watched and jumping ahead a little bit when, when Fiamma and I watched it recently, uh, there was a moment where she was like, Hey, the car chase is really slow, right? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, these cars, <laughs> these cars are going like, it's a school zone, I think. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are driving inside. Yeah. A, a They're driving inside with a rocket car. <laughs> For the time, I mean, it's always going to hold a special place in my heart. I've never really realized how much Batman was grounded in, like, the underground gangster stuff within Gotham City. Uh, my first real introduction to Batman in... in watching 66 Batman Mm -hmm. and all that. Like I wasn't, I wasn't so much into the theme that was going on as it was. I was just into the superhero being, being a superhero. And that's an interest. Yeah. I I had the same thing with the animated series where I, when I was a kid, I actually didn't, I would skip the episodes where he was dealing with the mob. Like I was not interested (laughs) unless he was punching the Riddler or, you know, stuck in a, you know, dream that the Mad Hatter had created or whatever. And then Killer Croc or yeah, Killer Croc was always fun. And then I love the Clayface episode. The Clayface episodes are especially those first two are so good. The uh, I I just got the box set for Christmas. So I've been revisiting them for a long time. You know, the the 60s, the 60s, even divorced from the Adam West series, leaned heavily into like the sci-fi adventure aspects yeah, big colorful rogues gallery, not getting too dark to the point where the Joker was like not really used in the comics for like 20 years. I mean, he he really made a comeback in the 60s and 70s, especially with like Denny O'Neill in, in charge of the character. But like there's the, there was more of a push in the 70s leading into the 80s to bring Batman back down to earth to the point where they burned down Wayne Manor and had him living like in a penthouse and, yeah. you know, dealing with more street crime. And, uh, and I think that this movie was trying to kind of embrace both aspects. We want to have the big, you know, bombastic fight with a, you know, colorful rogues gallery, but we also want him to be dealing with somewhat societal issues. I mean, there's a reason why the yeah. Joker is throwing money at a crowd who all of a sudden, thinks he's great you know <laughs> right uh I, I, it it's also a it that that also places it squarely in the 80s wall street scene you know i mean like that's right very right, much right. like a it's an economically driven villain <laughs> but i love how it's just a 
the the mob hiding behind front companies and all that with yeah. access, access chemicals and what they're trying to avoid, you know, being caught up in all of that. Which all went over my head as a kid. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I'm just, well, I'm I knew just exactly watching, what they were doing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm just watching gangsters be gangsters when I'm nine years old sure, watching sure. this movie. But it's really smart the way they played into that underground crime syndicate and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, our introduction to Bruce Wayne and what goes on there and walking <laughs> through Wayne Manor <laughs> is one of my favorite scenes of Knox and uh, Vicky walking through. Do you mean the his- Bruce Wayne super spreader event? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, I had a panic attack watching that scene again in the year in like the age of COVID. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is so crowded. Vicky can barely walk through the building. I think I had a similar thought. I was like, oh, there's too many people there. <laughs> you know what's weird about about this movie too, with mm-hmm. in regard to the Waynes, is that most people don't know. I, there's so many people in this movie who don't know who Bruce Wayne is. Nobody yes. they it is a mystery that the Waynes were killed. So, yeah, they had to, to m- dig up in old newspapers. They're like, who is this guy? Yeah, that is a, I think that is a symptom of uh, rewrites. That is a symptom of having a couple of different screenwriters and a script that wasn't really finished while they were filming because this movie wants to have it both ways. They want Wayne to be this guy who throws these big swanky fundraisers at his house with a hundred people or whatever. Um, But but nobody knows him. Yeah, but they also want him to be this weird Howard Hughes-esque reclusive. Yes. Um, and and it's it, that that's that's the problem is that it's it's not the movie doesn't really ever side with whether or not he's uh, yeah you know, anyone's ever met him before yeah like you said like they, they have to go through microfiche to find out that the Waynes were murdered <laughs> yeah it's like well <laughs> that's like supposed to be the biggest event ever in Gotham it's ever happened in Gotham yeah. right it's well, well you figure yeah. like well like when Knox and Vale are in his little armory thing like that and he walks all right Knox is a prominent reporter i guess in gotham and he doesn't know who bruce wayne is and vicky vale's a photo journalist who doesn't know what he looks like even though that scene is very <laughs> charming like like his uh i'm not all of my problems with bruce wayne in this movie have nothing to do with michael keaton's performance which i think is right. fantastic uh yeah when he when he first sees Vicky yeah. and he says I'm he's not, not sure. sure and he's got the pen and he's trying to figure out what to do with the that pen tracking and shot Alfred is so following good him. of Alfred. And, <laughs> oh, so and, and one thing they do really well in this movie is Bruce and Alfred's relationship. Absolutely. And, yes. and, oh, yeah. and you you right away see Alfred picking up behind him, picking up his pen, picking up his drink. Uh, and you know, of course the dinner scene later, you they really establish that love that mm-hmm. they have, which isn't always I think that that relationship continues to be a strong thread through the rest of that era of Batman movies. Like it's Mm -hmm. the best thing about Batman and Robin also. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. At the end where they're, where they're trying to save Alfred. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a tearjerker moment. But the cool thing after this is we get our, I mean, as kids, we get our first look at the Batcave. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks amazing. And you're like, Oh, I mean, we get the bigger look later, but that right there, you're like, the Batcave. Dude, that's what I wanted. I wanted to see Bruce sitting in the Batcave in the dark at his computers. With his his glasses, because Batman can't see. (laughs) (laughs) He just needs them for reading. Yeah, But he sees just fine when he's kicking ass all night. He's just got those little Dumbledore, like, half-moon glasses. (laughs) (laughs) But this leads us to the Axis Chemicals scene, which mm-hmm. I think is great. Another oh. another great introduction or, you know, a continuation into our introduction of Batman mm-hmm. within Gotham City. Another great set design as well. Oh, yeah, so just, good. I love so how they lay out some of the shots where one person will go up a flight of stairs, mm-hmm. another person will cross over, and then you'll see somebody else walk at the top. Like, it does a good job of confusing you mm-hmm. as to yeah. where everybody is within this, in this chemical plant. Mm-hmm. And, you know... Obviously, Jack's a smart guy. He figures out that they've been been ratted out here, boys. And he's so cool. He's not even surprised. He's not. Yeah. He's just like, oh, okay. Well, you know? well I think he kind of had a uh, a feeling because, like, in an earlier scene where Grissom is wanting him to go, and he's like, no, you need to go. Fumes yeah, that you know, place. Like, and you know, like that. But the, the part <laughs> here is where this movie kind of. There's a few parts of this movie that have the Batman '66 and TV show feel. Are the little side angle? Yeah. God, so the a, bad guy is shooting the good guys, and then some water will spurt out here. Some chemical that is so old school oh, Batman. So was oh, the those scene, scenes. so was the scene where his girlfriend 
says, you look fine. And he goes, I didn't ask. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love that. Like That's it. just that example of bravado that I'm saying, yeah. like all these char- all these actors are bringing to these characters. Can I call to attention a line in this sequence that, that yeah, go uh, for it. Lieutenant Eckhart, but who, by the way, is Porkins from Star Wars. Porkins. Yes. <laughs> that was going to be coming up later. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> the, uh, he, got, he says, he goes, shoot to kill know what i mean and i was like yeah <laughs> fucking like that's very clear <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Pretty uh, lieutenant i don't know what you mean you sorry before we start yeah what does shoot to kill exactly you mean aim for the head or the heart <laughs> his voice too is just oh, yeah. so deep like he's it's, just been chewing on cigars it's his whole almost life. a little too much he's I answered pushing. a grissom not to psychos <laughs> It's, I'm waiting for him to say, mm, they got gas in it. Mm, and I'm right, assuming Lonnie, he's like, get your mostly. ass away from there. <laughs> Can we get Donald Pleasance as a Joker? Donald Pleasance is back. <laughs> he's back. He's oh, going to be some, an inspiration for Harvey Bullock, I assume, right? That's So uh, Bullock was a character, I believe, already. Was Bullock in the so com- it's, comics already? they decided not to, maybe they decided not to go with Bullock because they were going to kill this character off. Right, he was going to be yeah. dirty, which Bullock's right. not. But he's well, got that I mean, Bullock, Bullock look. He definitely yeah. does. Yeah. Yes. So I want to go ahead and ask the question to everybody. Did Batman drop him? The, okay, so my oh. recent rewatch, this is the first time I've felt like maybe... It is so, it's very, like, it's weirdly, it's shot very, like, uh, uh, ambiguously. Yeah. Although this mm-hmm. is also the first time I've noticed, I always thought that the bullet, like, grazed Jack, but it goes in one cheek Through. and out the it other It comes out cheek. the other. Is that yeah. what it does? It I does. thought it just, See, like. I was confused yeah. on that, too. Explodes yeah. into shrapnel and just sort of, like, yeah. peppers. No, See, that's what I thought. It yeah. goes yeah, through one Batman. Thing. I double-checked yeah. it because in the, um. There's a there's a really great uh, comic adaptation of the movie by Jerry Ordway, and it like makes it super obvious that there's well, literally like an entrance just, and an exit wound. I just that had makes a, so much a, sense. A, a, no. a, a, that's why he needs the plastic surgery. That's why the guy. That's why it, he's got it, the smile. It, and it fucks, yes, yeah, the and bullet it fucks hole. up oh, his nerves. Yeah. They say he's got nerve damage. I I assumed it was the chemicals because the chemicals make other people mm-hmm. have the same smile and they're not getting shot through their face. But right. Yeah. See, that's, that's what I found confusing. Me and Jenny were mm-hmm. actually talking about that. It was like, okay, so he's either got nerve damage to his face and that's what's causing the the permanent smile. But I was like, well, wait. All these people that are getting gassed have the same thing. I think yeah. the gas part of it is just something that they synth- synthesized to make that work for them. I yeah. think it's also another, uh, you know, three screenwriters thing. <laughs> yeah, true. true. Well, 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 back, yeah. well, back to the question Josh had about drop. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. I, mean, I have that. I have it in my notes where he's like trying to save me. But if you notice, Batman hands jiggle like he's like, let go. Like. I get away from you see his hand move but it's and it really Jack's interesting off of your life. maybe i mean but he kind of see his hand shake like he's like let go of me yeah batman <laughs> does not seem to be struggling here Mm-mm. like he's very calm uh you well, know it doesn't look like he's like i'm gonna drop you sorry buddy you know well here's the thing that i have is we've seen batman on two occasions now deadlift a motherfucker <laughs> yeah. to hold yeah. him without any problem yeah. Yeah. we've and also now- seen in this scene that he can he can catch somebody with a line too and dangle them. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. In the beginning, he holds that guy over the, over the edge of the building, but, sure. uh, but to him being like that, uh, Jack in this movie is a little pudgy too. So <laughs> that's one arm. That's yeah, true. That's Batman tired. does do weight checks. It's, occasionally. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, the line pretty much gave way at 108 pounds, right? You know? Oh yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, Jack Nicholson in this movie is kind of a—he's a little portly. That's true, and that guy that Batman this time, picks up in the beginning of the movie he's is a, like he's like a meth head, dude. He don't weigh anything. <laughs> yeah. They look like mutants. Like they, they look <laughs> rough, dude. They look just, they, like that's cool. You yeah, they're probably talk about a Batman movie. Right? They're <laughs> they're probably uh, yeah, pretty pretty wasted away, pretty light. Yeah. You and can that, toss them around. Speaking of Jack, Batman lifting Jack, that's one of the best the most telling moments of who Jack Napier is as a character is he just kind of like fixes his, I mean, I do love the moment when he picks him up and Jack goes, Jesus. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he puts him back down and he just goes like, nice outfit. And Batman kind of gives him a little smirk. He's like, I know. like <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty sweet. I keep it in the vault for some reason. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Only have one. Yeah. yeah. I have racks Dude, the whole racks. movie, just one. 
<laughs> but where this movie really takes its turn is when you get him out of the vat of chemicals and into this surgeon. Oh my his, god! His, but the shot of his hand coming up. Yeah, well, the hand coming up out of the chemicals too, like with the green fingernails yeah. and, and the melted stuff. gloves. Yeah, this stuff yeah. is straight horror. Yeah, absolutely. But like the surgeon's office. It's obviously a back alley. It's a back alley yeah. guy, doctor. Yeah. Look what Why I have is to there work a with. sign? Why is there? Why does he have the sign? <laughs> that, that is the most Batman sixty six <laughs> moment in the movie. That is so funny. I think that because I I surgery this way. I, this, I think I've seen this movie more than any other movie. I genuinely believe that, and I still catch the like I caught that on like a co- a recent rewatch that made me laugh so hard. Mm-hmm. But I I love the scene because it's it, he's all wrapped up mm-hmm. in gauze and the doctor saying i did all i could with the nerve damage and you see what kind of tools i have and these are like very rusted nasty looking he has plastic surgery but when he sees it the laugh that initial laugh you're like this is where i mean this is where jack nicholson goes (laughs) from from one to ten yeah is right here i love his giggles yeah through the movie they're way better than his like Full on laughing when he starts giggling, like in the middle of a sentence, you know, just muttering to himself and giggling. That stuff is so good. But uh, yeah, because right after this is when we get him. uh, He goes up to Grissom's tower. Right. Uh, It's a reveal. Is that you, Sugar Bombs? Yeah, Yeah. I I've got the clip. I'm gonna go. Oh, please. That you, Sugar Bombs? Who the hell are you? It's me. It's me. Sugar Bones. Sugar Bones. Oh. Oh. Thank God you're alive. I heard you been fried. Is that what you heard? You set me up over a woman. A woman! Woman! You must be insane. You're right. The chuckles are scarier. I, I'm, the whole dynamic of this scene, like he knows that Grissom's got the gun there and he's mm-hmm. going to go for it. You know? Don't bother. Don't bother. Your life won't be worth spit. Spit. I've been dead once already. It's very liberating. You should think of it as uh, therapy. Yeah, that's that's something. That line is great. Yeah. Listen. That's some pure killing joke stuff too. Maybe we can cut a deal. Jack. Jack. Jack is dead, my friend. You can call me Joker. The purple makeup on his neck. And as you can see, yeah. I'm a lot happier. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just love the wild shooting. I don't care if I'm hitting him or not. Yeah, just check this. Yeah. I also love his heavy breathing, which I, I'm, I, I, I'm pretty sure Ledger brings with him uh, yes. with his performance. Yeah. Uh, right after this, when when Joker sits down at at Grissom's desk. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's kind of looking at the newspaper of Batman and that kind of stuff, and he's just breathing. Wing you can freak hear it terrorizes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you can just hear that his breath. He's just—it's it, weird. He uh, breathes through like it's like gritted teeth. He does it a few times in the movie where it's just like a, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is weird. Like he's blood. He's like he's like he's uh, frothing at the mouth. It's it's really interesting. So meanwhile. Uh, Bruce and Vicky have had a date. That long table. <laughs> a very comical one that as well. Table. I, I so love the, the long table gag is fun. And, yeah. uh, you know, you get Can stories. Can you pass the salt? <laughs> you get stories with Alfred. And then yeah. uh, she stays over. Jenny, if you came over to, uh, if you were on a date and this is like the start of it, the guy gives you fucking soup and you're on a, you're at like 40 yards away from him, like at a table and he doesn't even know the layout of his own home. And then his old homie comes in to hang out with you guys. Do you fucking stay? Do you sleep with him? By the way, Batman gets his dick no. wet in this movie. <laughs> Batman just got his dick wet. What? 
So, but yes. I will say Bruce Wayne turns on the charm he because does. when He's she says, "Do you like charming. eating in here?" and he's his like, come to think of it, I don't think I've ever been in this room before. It's like, cute. I think that's genuinely funny. Yeah. And you get the vibe that like he's faking drinking like Batman. It was just very much a thing from like year one and Dark Knight Returns is that Batman doesn't drink. He's right. like yep. hanging out drinking like ginger ale, pretending that he's like this billionaire like layabout. Yeah. Uh, but that is a little problematic. Because yes, because he's on a date and she is drunk by the end and he is yep. fine. Yeah. <laughs> and, yep. and he takes full advantage of his situation. Yeah. Also, when she when she leaves the next morning, how has Batman never been caught? Because like Alfred, Alfred, Alfred should blows know. Blows it. Alfred should know if that if I hear something that I haven't heard about, I should just play along with it. Because he's like, Miss Vale, we're going to be here for quite a while. I thought the same thing when yeah. he said it this time. Yeah, I was like, like Alfred, Ooh. did you he's- forget that we have a massive secret that we're trying to keep? <laughs> right. <laughs> But the other part is she wakes up in the middle of the night and he's hanging upside down like oh, a yeah. bat with his wings all arms all spread like a is bat. Is he mm. sleeping or is he doing like some kind of workout? I think it's a thing. I think it's meant to be a workout. Like a, like a meditation moment. I thought yeah. I, I genuinely He's not a bat. It's a bit too far. No. Yeah. But it's that's but that's what I'm saying. Like they were really reaching. Yeah. Yeah, like he's eating like a little bowl of there. fruit and insects. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I've got a I've got another <laughs> clip here of Jack Nicholson, and I, this just goes to show you how much this is his movie because all we're talking about is him and, and the Joker and yeah. whatnot. But this is one of my favorite scenes of his in this. Is this and where they have the boss meeting? This is where they're having the boss meeting. This is my I, oh, favorite scene this. in the movie. Genuinely, I, my favorite. And Bob. <laughs> What the fuck is he doing he's, here? He's doing a Jack like, Palance impression. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he did. He, Jack yeah. Palance did that to him when he was sending him to uh, access yeah. chemicals. So, I know he did. I know he did. I, and, and that's not yeah. lost on me. But what Jack Nicholson is doing right here is so fucking freaky. But here's but the it's thing. It's his impersonation of Jack Palance because that's Jack Palance. Jack Palance <laughs> is terrible in this movie. Oh, yeah. horrible. His performance is terrible. He's like, Jack. Yo, it's the, that's why I want a, you in charge of this operation. <laughs> like it's like literally, it's 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 this insane vaudeville performance, and apparently he and Tim Burton did not get along on set to the point where Tim Burton was asking him to like rein it in a little bit because he was being super over the top. And Jack Palance said something like, "I've done over a hundred pictures. How many movies have you made?" And yeah, so, that sounds like, like something he would say. I think there was like a like there was like this like a feeling of you know what fuck this guy. And so I'm I I would love to to know if Jack Palance saw the premiere of this and was just like furious with Jack <laughs> Nicholson because it's right. so ballsy. I mean it's it's yeah. it's almost as incredible as the guy playing Wal- Christopher Walken's son in Batman Returns doing a Walken oh. impression to him. Yeah, like it's yeah. it's really great. <laughs> It's it's funny too because as as the character of Joker, no one knows what he's talking about when he's doing that. He's, <laughs> yeah. That's literally just a, a joke to make himself laugh, which and Bob, is such yeah. a jokery thing to do. Bob takes, but him Bob seriously. is his fucking Bob is his right fucking hand man, yeah. dude. Like Bob is down for whatever because he does this weird thing to Bob, and then Bob just goes yes sir, and then puts on yeah. his glasses. <laughs> but I want to I, I want to let that scene play a little longer because. Mm. This is more like prime Jack Nicholson stuff. Grease him yeah. now. <laughs> Just the face. <laughs> so funny. And the conversation with a corpse. Like, yeah. like when I was a kid, I don't think I really realized how macabre this we, is. Uh, give him a few days. Give him a couple of days to think it over. But the aspect of him wiping away the flesh-colored makeup, yeah. and it's the white underneath. I love, it. I love his face right there. Yeah. Like he's shocked. Yeah. Okay. Grease him now? Okay. You are a ruthless <laughs> bastard, Fratelli. Fratelli. I'm glad you did. <laughs> I'm glad you did. It's <laughs> my favorite scene in the movie. That's a good one. <laughs> that is one of my favorite, just psycho scenes. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you did. <laughs> yeah, so he makes himself, himself laugh. Yeah, yes. exactly. 
Yeah. Um, that was, that was the thing that struck, uh, my girlfriend when we watched this recently was she was just like all, everything, most of the lines the Joker has don't make sense. And they work as like an, a kind of anti-comedy. Like he has, he says things that don't, he has a bit where he says, I'm in a, I'm of a mind to make some Mookie, which is like an insane, like doesn't really make any sense. It's so funny but he he it's like it's it's anti-comedy he 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 likes i don't he does things just to make amuse himself well that stuff yeah. kind of carries over into the animated series sure which is my favorite joker personally is me the, too mark hamill the mark hamill joker and he's constantly making jokes that no one laughs at but him that's kind of a, a big part of that joker is that his jokes don't hit except for himself he thinks he's hilarious there's an extended sequence in mask of the phantasm when he's just by himself in the you know the world's fair and he's just talking to this mannequin he's like meatloaf again like it's you know it's just <laughs> he's just doing it to himself um and I, I i love that aspect of the character that whole sequence is incredible to the point where you feel like no christopher nolan felt like we have to outdo it with our Definitely. own boardroom sequence um in the dark knight when you know the joker's mm -hmm. first appearance but there's i i just i love how everyone's just kind of like from the get-go not on board with him taking over organized crime there's the one dude is just like you're crazy <laughs> like, you well, know? I just well the fact that like in 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 the dark knight christopher nolan's dark knight yeah. they at least respond to what the joker does like these fucking dudes here are like no response whatsoever they're just watch this dude electrocute a guy to death and they're just sitting there like Oh, well, I mean, they are gangsters. I'm sure they've seen some pretty heinous shit, but like they do nothing to the fact that one of their own is being killed right in yeah, front of them. They're scared shitless because they've never seen anybody fry somebody. And, I, and not know. to nitpick here, but, you know, he, he does say, where does he get all those wonderful toys uh, in that great line la later? But he has his own toys that where yeah. the hell did they come from? Where do you get a joy buzzer that can literally fry someone? Yeah. I need one of those. <laughs> one of my oh, favorite what? things is the punch gun that he yeah. that he uses to punch the TV. The boxing gloves. Yeah. A yeah. Lot of TV. The Joker. Yeah, just like the Shredder and Ninja Turtles, just throwing <laughs> knives into televisions. <laughs> yeah, he's got a room in the back just full of new television. Oh, Joker needs a new television. Bob, bring out my CRT. <laughs> <laughs> And we follow Vicky through the city as she's following Bruce around. She's caught mm -hmm. on to the fact that he's hiding something from her. He lied to her. He did not go out of town. The fact that no one knows who Bruce Wayne is just seems very odd yeah. in this. And, like, they have to research his background and everything. But this leads to the scene of, I guess you would call it the clown attack at City Hall. That is actually, that is what the it's mind. called in D Danny Elfman's music cue for this sequence is called clown attack. <laughs> ah, there you <laughs> go, Jason. <laughs> Suck it. I don't care. They're mimes. <laughs> Did you not just watch Terrifier? Hello. Yeah. It should have been called mime your own business. You're right. <laughs> and does nobody think it's weird that uh, like a 12, you know, a dozen or so mimes have just shown up right out in front of City Hall? It was the 80s. It was a different time. <laughs> you never know. There were mimes everywhere back then. Yeah, mimes I, money. You don't remember that? <laughs> like the mimes money. It's a line, it's a line like from Spinal Tap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Joker's wardrobe has changed into this completely loud and yeah. out there, you know, just... Mm -hmm. all, he makeup. is embracing the clown side of all of yeah. this very much so. Yeah. I love his how he changes his and, eyebrows, and then he has the little old school, like, Betty Page lips. Yes. Yeah. Like our Betty Boop lips painted on. Well, that's like, another Joker line that makes no sense and is incredible. That, hey there, Benny. It's your Uncle Bingo. Time to pay the yeah. check. <laughs> but it's so, it's like it's so creepy the way he says it and comes across. Like it, it's very yeah. sinister. He reached yeah. up with his dead hand. The but, costuming is excellent. Yeah. And he's got a different yeah. costume every time we see him mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. every new scene with Joker, you get a new look, and they're all great. This one's my favorite look. I, I do love the black and white, like, you know, top hat and tails. And like like Jason said, the the, the kind of cutesy, like, lipstick, like the old school, like, it looks like an old school Harley Quinn kind of, like, look. Yeah. yeah. And I love that throughout this, Bruce Wayne is observing and doesn't even get down. He gets, he gets shot in the arm. He gets, he gets grazed yeah. by a bullet while they're shooting Tommy guns everywhere, and he's just staring at Joker. 
and, and I love the Tommy guns that they're using as, as opposed to like a modern machine gun. Like it still feels very 50s. And that, no, it has like a that 20s gangster. Like, yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. And another a great Knox line uh, whenever the, the one guy is talking about how Grissom's going to let him take over all of his businesses. He goes, yeah, you do some time together as kids. It's <laughs> <laughs> a really great line. <laughs> He's very snarky when it comes to even at the end when he's asking questions to the the chief and everything. How do we like, call him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it was after this we get to the funny scenes of the the punch gun because it shoots because mm-hmm. Joker's pissed because Batman's getting all of his freaking press no yeah. matter what he does. It's all about Batman and Gotham, right. and it's fucking driving him nuts. That's I think what leads to it is just. His ego is so overinflated. He's like, I can't take sharing the limelight with somebody. Well, and that's what happens. Yeah, like there's there's all this stuff. Like people are dying constantly uh, because of something the Joker did. And the the real headline is, oh, so you think we can trust this Batman guy? He's <laughs> <It's> just like, <laughs> motherfuckers, I'm trying to give you a nightmare. <laughs> like, This town needs an enema. <laughs> you know, what a weird line. Again, it's, like- it's something that's funny to him. It's like, so it good. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Eric, I wanted to ask you if you noticed the branding that the Joker actually has in this movie from a person who works in advertisements and stuff like that. Like, he, like the Joker is crazy and he does whatever he wants and all that, but he's not so low as to not have a brand His for himself. His guys are all because- wearing, like, armbands. <laughs> Yeah, well, like they yes, got the Joker logo on their jackets. His and- brand is strong. He's got he's got <laughs> Joker outfits. He's got he's got these incredible Neil Adams drawings that don't yeah. look like him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you have actual art from the comics. Um, yeah, and uh, you know the cars are properly branded with you know I love the Joker cars. You know Me we're going to talk about the Batmobile, yeah. but the yeah those those Joker cars are incredible. He's yeah. got his own. Uh, he's big on branding. He likes a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wears a lot of makeup. He's an artist. Uh, Makes commercials. Starting to remind me of somebody. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he's a chemist. But yeah, uh, I love all that stuff. I and you know, Joker notoriously throughout the comics and cartoons and stuff like that is all about proper branding. All the all the the Batman villains are, mm-hmm. you know, mostly. Well, I mean, Batman's doing it himself. Why not? Doing yeah, him? Why exactly. not let the villains do it too? Yeah, you know? where's Joker Inc. <laughs> <laughs> well this is leading up to the scene at the museum which is a ruse the joker has set up vicky vale to meet him and him there thinking mm-hmm. she's going to be meeting bruce yeah, um because he fell in love with her from the pictures that bob took yeah well i mean oh. so infatuated but let's with her. let's let's go ahead and put it out there i mean it's not unplausible that the Joker fell in love with her at first sight because I mean Bruce and Vicky fall in love with each other after sleeping together one time. Do we, so, go, to the, yeah. do we go to the museum first, or is the but, or the is news the, report the news reports first? Right. Yes. True. The news reports. True. Yeah, the news Which reports is so scary, that. like genuinely, like very shocking. Uh, yeah. And that fake commercial is just so funny. Like it shouldn't be funny, but it's so good. I, I just that that whole sequence. It was another thing that like went over my head as a kid. I didn't really understand what was happening. Um, yeah. But the you know the cutouts of the two dead models <laughs> that he's using with their yeah. lips moving. Love that Joker. Yeah. You know they're like- they're so th- this stuff is so prime Joker. You yes. know, uh, yeah. taking control of the television, doing some big grand, you know, scheme that's going to get him attention mm-hmm. and people are going to die. And, uh, you know, all the theatrics, all that kind of stuff is 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 really just so, so true to the Joker character. What in, right. in my you know, my Joker that I like, there's been a lot of iterations of Joker over the years, but I like the big performance Joker. Yeah. The one that wants to make a giant, uh, you know, event out of everything. A smile or lip color. So natural. Yeah. Only your undertaker will know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not the fact, you know, because we got just gangster Jack Napier. He t- t- turns into the Joker, but he was, he's really very, he's above the lot, the mark as far as smart. Yeah. I mean, we find out later that he's, he's like top notch in chemistry and stuff. So then mm-hmm. all this falls back that he knew what he was doing. It wasn't just something he threw together. Oh, yeah. And maybe this to kill people. No, he knew exactly what to, to go together to this and this to make you Well, nice and that's what's interesting is he somehow takes over the chemical plant off screen uh, to yeah. use to create that. But it's it's like I, I do love the idea that he's hidden various components in different yeah. products. That is a um, clever and it gives Batman a chance to do some detective work, which we don't right. get very often. Especially yeah. in movies. movies. 
yeah. but there's a there's also that great line where Bruce says, "Alfred, let's go shopping." And where's that scene? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, with some elevator music and them just pushing a shopping cart. Do we need any frosted flakes, sir? <laughs> No, we need bat. We need Batman cereal Batman so we can cereal. cut up the roof of our mouth. <laughs> Diet Coke. Uh, oh, and if we break right. down, we have OnStar on demand. <laughs> We're coming up to the to the museum scene, and I want to go ahead and get into some almost famous real quick. Almost famous. Yeah, I know that dude. I don't know them. I know her. You, haven't you ever heard of that guy? What, what's his name? That guy who was in that movie that was out last year. I'm going to go ahead and throw out Bob the Goon. Yes. Tracy I have Walter. Bob as one in mine. I had that's who I have for one of mine. Um, the, he has been in a lot of fucking movies, dude. Like over a hundred movies. Yeah. Dude, he was in Conan the Destroyer. Yeah. Hello. Wasn't he in this because he's Jack Nicholson's like BFF or something like that? Like, didn't he? I'm not sure. I, I, did, like, I didn't get any research oh, on that, but. Yeah. He was in even on on uh, what was it movie uh, I spit on your grave. That's right, a small part. He was in, yeah. there in that. Wow, um, deep cut I, there. In the same scene, I would like to mention it's not really him, but the the guy Lawrence, the guy holding the boombox, looks exactly like Sergeant Slaughter, and that makes me really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence, <laughs> yeah, he was in young he was in Young Guns too, and yeah. had a small part in Silence of the Lambs. Lamb? Um, oh yeah, and then. He was uh, in uh, Aaron Brockovich, too. Small scene in there. Yeah. He's actually one that helps break their case in that movie. So he's Oh, yeah. Major... Oh, you know what? I do have one, and I don't have the actor's name in front of me. So I will What's look the that character? I'll tell you. you. Keep... The, um, the, the guy that Batman dangles over the roof at the beginning of the movie. Oh, I can't tell you that one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have it. I'll look it up. But you uh, guys Pat, talk. I'll go, with, uh, I'll go with Pat Hingle. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I just want to point out Jerry Hall as the... Jack's girlfriend, the the blonde, because she's a, she that was a, a a a very famous model in the yeah. UK, and then also famously married to um, well, she's married to Rupert Murdoch right now, which is oh wow uh, gross, uh, but she was married <laughs> to uh, to uh, Rolling Stones guy. Why can't I think of his name? Mick, Mick Jagger? Jagger. Yes, thank you. Oh right, okay. Mick Jagger. I could totally forget them, you know, because we know how Josh feels about the Rolling Stones. Okay, uh oh, uh, I found uh-oh. him. Uh-oh. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Um, <laughs> Christopher Fairbank, uh, the actor okay. that plays Nick, the guy that, that's dangled over the rooftop, he Who is the broker in Guardians of the Galaxy. He's the, oh. he's, oh. the um, he's the doctor that like peeks in on Bruce Willis and Mia Jovovich having sex at the end of The Fifth Element. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> the one who's like, they're, they're, um, uh, and he's like, um, they need five more. <laughs> and he's in like he's in an episode of Doctor Who. Like the dude pops up all the time. Alien three. Alien yeah. three. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But so I that would, that would... point point out the one that uh, that uh, Eric said. Uh, Pat Hingle. Other than you know him being Gordon through these Batman movies, you remember he was also a Maximum Overdrive. Hendershot. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He was the guy who owned the truck stop. He's also in Talladega Nights. <laughs> <laughs> he's Very been in a handful last. of things. Yeah. But. Uh, Nathan brought up uh, William Hookins, who played mm-hmm. Eckhart. Um, he was Porkins in Star Wars. He's also in Raiders, right? I think. Raiders, yeah. yeah. A few other, you know, B movies mm-hmm. like American Gothic and stuff like that. So, Jenny, did you have anybody in particular? I feel like I've seen Knox and quite a few things. Arliss. Um, yeah. Yeah, Arliss. he was a Arliss. That's the main show, thing he yeah. did they, was Arliss. He just reprised the role of Alexander Knox in the CW's Crisis on Infinite Earths. He pops I up saw at that. the beginning yep. of the first yep. episode, which is yep. it made me really happy. <laughs> well, uh, just for Jenny saying Knox, he was also in Good Morning Vietnam. He was the one uh, little private that was in the movie, and he was in Bull Durham as one of the, I think, one of the coaches. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, he's been in a few things. Kim Basinger played the role of Prince's girlfriend for a little while. <laughs> 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 but now we're at the museum one of the coolest scenes in the movie yeah. the flugenheim the flugenheim it's, it's hilarious jenny audibly like laughed out loud like she was she she thought it was so funny bruce wayne's an idiot like he legit like gets the alfred's like she said she'll be late meeting you at the museum and he goes okay that sounds great Hang on, I'm not like this is not the guy who can make split decisions. <laughs> Wait, I am the world's greatest detective, and I just totally missed this. But I don't, ha- I don't have a planner. 
<laughs> I feel like the Joker demolishing the museum feels a little a little goofy and out of place now for some reason for me. Oh, I adore it. I, it's I, very think, Banksy. I, I love the he's I love the music <laughs> scene and everything. Yeah. It's great. I think that this fits with their the the conception of the Joker as a quote unquote homicidal artist where he's trying to like apply some kind of grand design to what he's doing. I think now that I like. I, I really like that he's just cutting loose. The you know the scenes of him where he's like, you know, doing the same pose as the ballerina sculpture is so funny to me. Uh, right. It, it's all performance art. He's expressing yeah. himself. I do art until somebody dies. But I like, I, I, but he's truly an artist because when he sees something he likes, he won't let, I mean, because Bob goes for the one painting. Is ah, That Hieronymus like Bosch one, piece, it's so funny. It's such, it's really funny. And I love that when he says the $1 bill to the yeah. George Washington uh thing that the guy goes around and sprays a circle around his head i like the let's give him a shave (laughs) (laughs) but also the fact that the music's diegetic is really funny to me like the 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 fact that it's 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 legit he like brought a guy whose sole job is to carry the boom box yeah especially for when like later on when he's trying to be like sexy he's like all right let's put on beautiful dreamer it's time (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i mean that's his thing like everything's a performance everything he Mm -hmm. needs background music you know and the lighter that's basically a blowtorch so that's good i had that i had that in my notes where you just that's a great great. gag but i like when he's talking to vicky and he he gives her the whole homicidal artist thing and he goes i'm the world's first fully functional homicidal artist and he and he does that little kiss oh, yeah. to her, like <laughs> when she throws the water on his face and he does the whole "I'm melting" thing. Yes, I love it. And that she I actually that gets shit. concerned. Yeah, she's like yeah. patting it. Like I always found that kind of weird that she's like walking up and patting his back, like, "Oh, I'm sorry, are you okay? like he he didn't just try to murder you, like right? Like he just tried to squirt her with acid right. from his rose. Have yeah. a little whiff like, of my oh, posy. And are we to assume that? Everybody else in the museum is dead, yes. or is this just like a They're sleeping dead. gas? They're all dead, They're dead. for sure. Yeah, I mean, so that like, lady like like face plants into her German chocolate cake with her face like <laughs> her eyes wide open. <laughs> I love the bit when he's going through her portfolio and he's just he's like crap, 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 crap. No, I love it. I love I love Joker. Like his obsession with photography in this movie is an interesting choice. Like he goes through her portfolio. There's the bit earlier when Bob brings him all the pictures and he's like, "Who is this loss?" You know, like when he looks at the picture <laughs> of Knox, it's so good. Um, and there's just all those cut up pictures scattered around the oh, floor and everything. One of and... his best lines is when he's cutting out the picture of Vicky Vale, and he goes, "He goes, it's hard to stay inside the lines." <laughs> <laughs> the only time bob laughs at one of his jokes which i like um, or i love i love bob's comment there though he's like he's dating some she's dating some guy named wayne some guy named wayne she's about to trade up she's about <laughs> to trade up yeah. um yeah the whole museum scene is great and it has that i mean to the point where how many times now have we seen batman come through a skylight you know yeah. or it's just it's so good that shot of him coming straight down through the skylight is just incredible and the sound the foley design is so good the, the like it's just yeah. it's such a it's it's a very distinctive sound effect yeah it's but like stone colds me. coming in yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what always got me about this is he he's he lands right next to vicky and then puts the whatever this thing is in joker's face almost like it's a weapon but and then joker doesn't move like he kind of puts his head back but he doesn't duck yeah it's it, he's a death wish <laughs> the way this thing works and how it splays open and then shoots the two the, yeah. the two lines in di- different directions like it's just kind of jarring the way that happens because yeah. it's not really what you're expecting uh-huh. at, in, in that moment but when he zip lines across there and we get the Does he get those wonderful toys? This was my favorite scene when I was a kid, just because in in my head I always picked I always felt like there was more action in this movie than there really is. There really I mean it's very minimal. Yeah, and Batman can't really move. It is so funny whenever he has to look up or something and he just has to completely lean his entire yeah. body yeah. back. Yeah, but I, that, he's like Mr. Not, Bean in that way. <laughs> yeah. At least they uh, got to that problem in uh, was it the Dark Knight? Sure. Yeah. Uh, you want <laughs> you want to turn your head. <laughs> well, while we're here and we've seen Batman a few times in this, and we've talked about the branding of this movie, yeah. and you've got 
you've got the bat symbol here, sure. which I'm I'm showing everyone the, the, the classic poster with the bronzed bat symbol. Yep. Yeah. We've got that one. And then one thing that has always bothered me in this movie is how this is what's on the, weird the little cowl. spiny thing. Yeah. Like there's extra extra little wings mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. And I wonder why that was left there. Like if it was a conscious choice or if it was like they did it and then something along like the showings or the viewings or whatever, like people didn't respond well to it. So they rebranded. Like, I think it's really weird that it's like that. And it's it not like that anywhere in the branding. More like one hand, not knowing what the other hand is doing yeah. kind of a thing. You've got the, the people designing for the movie and then you've got the marketing people and yeah. And the marketing just, campaign kicked off. You know, before I mean, while they were shooting, so maybe that stuff wasn't finalized. But it is, it is very strange. It's an odd, it's an odd thing because I I genuinely don't like the way the uh, symbol looks in the movie and just also, the, the flat yellow on it. You know, yes. Well, it's yeah. also not the bat symbol you see at the end of the film when they turn right. on the bat signal. Like it's not. That's well, that's not, a rounded version too. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I know what you mean. It's year one. He's still figuring out his branding. <laughs> and this is a very visual thing that we're talking about. I'll throw some pictures on our social media in reference to what we're talking about. Right. But the but, coolest part about this scene that we're talking about is this scene that happens after it. Because as a kid, we get to finally see the freaking Batmobile the that we Batmobile. have seen in the trailer. Yeah. Dude. That's oh, I love. love, love this is by far mm-hmm. my favorite ever Batmobile design. Yeah, I don't know if it will ever change. The close like, second is the animated series Batmobile, but like this yes. is just yes, it's so good, and it it the 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 little fins on the back are so dope. Uh, the little the little bat symbols, you know, like I I just now, even the way the the hood zooms back, it looks just I, I everything about it is just so cool. Yeah. Just looks fast as hell too. It does, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Although it doesn't have a very good turning radius. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we thought was that in uh, Batman Returns? He has to shoot the grappling hook out. It's so this one. A hard no, right that's hand. this one. Oh, he has this to make one? that okay. turn in yeah. this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So many, so many cabbages get killed in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but the cool thing about the card, tell me if you were talking about the whole branding in the movie. Who remembers when MTV was offering you the chance to win? the Batmobile. Was it this one or was it the Batman Forever Batmobile? No, it was this oh. because I remember begging my mom to enter this contest like all the time because you had to be 18 years or older and I'm like, <laughs> mom, enter this. I want to so, drive the Batmobile to school when I'm 16. I loved this movie so much. I remember there was this thing in the early 90s when Nickelodeon was doing a make you know let your voices be heard who do you think should be the next president it was like during one of the like i think when clinton was running for re-election perhaps mm-hmm. i didn't like they were like here write in your name for who you think should be the president we'll do like this special election episode of nickelodeon news and i didn't know really anything about how the presidency worked i just knew that all presidents were famous and the only famous person whose name i knew was michael keaton and i remember (laughs) (laughs) i remember being three or four and having the distinct thought michael keaton should be the president (laughs) and i'm still not convinced i'm wrong uh so (laughs) but yeah i don't i'm sorry that was very off topic but i just i I just uh quickly looked up the batmobile giveaway jason yeah and and you're right it was for this movie uh in this batmobile but it had no engine so it was basically a a giant full-size replica uh it had the interior like the cockpit or whatever you would call it sure no engine so so it was a paperweight yeah. So thank you, Eric, for crushing my dreams. <laughs> and I quit. I quit now. <laughs> now you know that you, you didn't miss out, man. Uh, well, still, I hey, I, I became a mechanic later. I could have put an engine in that. Right. Thing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I want to. Put- so we go we go back to the Batcave. He yeah. saves. I Vicky. love this sequence of him driving Vicky to the Batcave. Mm-hmm. Through the woods and all that. That forest. Like we've, this so- is a side of Gotham we've never oh. seen. <laughs> That forest looks so Tim Burton-y. That alleyway yep. fight is very good, too. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Right, we skipped alleyway. over that. He, he does, uh, he Indiana Jones is that one guy. Yep. yep. Yeah. They get, he gets to fight a little bit, though. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that whole fight, though. I mean, it's very toned down, and I like that she's snapping the pictures during, yeah. the, during the whole fight. Um, but 
this dude who just completely fucking somersaults over the wall and comes out with his uh, ninja swords. Sword yeah. Oh my god! Like I loved it as a kid, but watching it now, I'm like, it's where rough. the fuck did this guy come from? <laughs> but that's like, what we're talking about. He ain't in a Jones team. Like he fought him, and then he backed up, and he come at him. He just, just stands there, and he's him. freaking or kicks him. him. Yeah. He kicks him in the face. Yeah. Touch him for a flip. There's a that like, whole sequence is great because it's the first time anyone's gotten close to Batman. They shoot him, yeah. and they, yeah. they like touch it. Like they touch his body. They find out he's wearing body armor, and that's how they finally know that he's human because he's been like this unknown entity. I do love Bob saying, check his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, the, yeah, does, it look, does it look like this motherfucker's got a wallet yeah. on him? Yeah, he's got his Bruce Wayne driver's license in there. <laughs> I want to see the cut scene where they pulled his wallet, and it's just the ID that says, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see them pull his mask off, and there's another mask underneath it. <laughs> A mask. No, you pull mask. it off, and there's no black eye makeup around his eyes. Sure, yeah, like in oh, Batman yeah. Returns. Returns when he rips it. Like it, when you talk about Batman and all the Batman movies, he's got makeup and takes it off. It's gone. Like, yeah. That's why I well, love. There's that one shot of Robert Pattinson. Yes, where yep. he's yes. got eyeliner all over his face, and I'm just like, fuck yeah, well, fucking welcome to the Black Parade, Batman. Like, let's do this. <laughs> I, yeah, I do love that that because he take and you see that I'm like finally they got it right. Batman's a little rude to Vicky Vale here too. Yeah, he fat shames her. Mm-hmm. You weigh a little more than 108. Oh, oh really? really? <laughs> yeah, it's a dick move. Also, like we've seen Don't Vicky try not to break my car when you get in it. <laughs> <laughs> we've seen Vicky in all these extravagant outfits, sure. like even. At, at one point, I'm like, I, I can't remember what scene it was, but she's wearing something really like it's fancy when looking. They're at the party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's at the she's party. Got that, like, it's like a big formal. Sleeve. But she shows up to the museum in this whole scene, and she's got on this like blue it's like sweater, a fucking like half it's a sweater dress. Sweater dress, like, yeah. does not look as classy as everything else we've she's seen. She's also got on. that blown yeah. out '80s frizz fry hair That's too. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought that conversation was going to go somewhere else. She's got that blown out <laughs> 80s. Never mind. <laughs> also, this is when this is when the screaming from Kim Basinger starts and doesn't stop. And this I this is where I feel like the character starts to take a downturn. Like in yeah, terms they've of they've set her up to be so independent and a strong female character. And, and then she's like a when, damsel for the second half. Yeah, when yeah. Batman enters the picture, she just becomes a damsel in extress and it drives Damsel in distress, and it drives me crazy. The damsel in damsel a dress. Damsel in a dress. <laughs> yeah. in the damsel in Panda <laughs> Express. But the cool part about, it, like Josh was saying, as he's driving the Batmobile, I love the high speed shots when he's going mm-hmm. by. But when he gets in the, we actually, get, when we saw the Bat Cave earlier, we saw the Bat Computer, but that whole big shot yeah. of the whole cave, and it's like. <gasps> but he's such an asshole. He, like, r- r- drives toward a wall and only opens it at the last <laughs> second. Like, all he, like, the whole time he's just trying to traumatize. I like how he turns the light on in her eye when she's trying to look at him he's like here yeah he turns the light on to distract her yeah uh, or even when they get out of the car, watch your step. And he's like, watch your step. Like he like, waits till the last second to be like, oh, you could fall to your death right here. But yeah. wait, <laughs> let me turn the lights on. <laughs> Why is there one bat in a birdcage? That's his favorite yeah. bat. Yeah, that's man bat. That's his favorite bat. That's so bat he might. imprisons it. <laughs> 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 that should be his least favorite bat. Like you're in timeout, buddy. Jenny made a good observation here. Yeah. It's nighttime. They will not be there. What if what if Batman was developing COVID-19? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it was intended to be like a, a, an antitoxin for the yeah. Joker yeah. gas or something, but it just went wrong. Like, yes. <laughs> Beast Boy broke in here and fucked this bat. <laughs> But we, I love the whole dark. If you notice in the scenes where Michael Keaton's Batman, mm-hmm. he's always kind of in the shadow, even when he's talking to her. But you get the little bit of the Dracula eye line. Yes, and he keeps turning his face because he's like he doesn't want her to even see his like jawline. This is the yeah. She's, she's trying to trying to get a look at him, and mm-hmm. he won't let her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I, it always struck me as weird that the fact that they let Vicky into the Batcave later in the movie, like yeah. I always found it kind of weird. Like this is supposed to be something. Uh, I guess that's the whole theme between he and Vicky. But like this is supposed to be your big secret, and then all of a sudden Alfred's like, "Oh, <laughs> let me let her into the Batcave." Alfred <laughs> fucked up. She figures it out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> she does. So yeah. Alfred knows the cat's out of the bag. Also, Alfred's trying to encourage him to tell her anyway. Yeah. 
He's like, hey, you can't hang out with me the rest of your life. Go get you something, you know? Yeah. Like, well, and that's one of my one of my favorite moments in the whole movie is Alfred. There's a sense, it's not really explored heavily. There's a sense that Alfred is really trying to get him to quit. Uh, yeah. You know, he yeah. says, I don't, I don't want to spend my, you know, I'm butchering the line, but he doesn't want to spend his whole life mourning the Waynes or him. He doesn't yeah. want them to die. He doesn't want him to like give up his life. And so yeah. that's, that's his way of saying like basically forcing Bruce's hand to either put mm. up or shut up, you know? Yeah. I right. mean, Alfred through all the films has been uh, the caregiver, the best friend, basically the father figure. Mm-hmm. For Bruce. So that's, he literally has a deep love for him. I mean, he, he supports what he does, mm-hmm. but he knows eventually he's probably going to end up in an early grave. Alfred's one of my and favorite he, characters in the comics, oh. like hands down to, to, to the point where, I mean, spoilers for current Batman comics, but, you know, he's not around anymore. And it's a real downer because he's such a... a, a I did not care for that. No, I didn't either. I he's, he's We, we can talk about what, Tom King off the mic. <laughs> <laughs> he's always been what grounds Batman. He's always like, mm-hmm. you know, you, you introduce the love interest and all that. But whenever it comes back around to it, it's always Alfred that keeps him keeps him honest. Just he knows what's going to be good and bad for Bruce, but it's sad that they have to have that kind of relationship. Yeah. Like you can tell that Alfred wants more for him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's also got some major sass in this movie. Like, he sure does. He's uh, back at the party when he's you know got the drinks. He's going around and Knox gives him a tip, and he just kind of he, he just looks mm. so offended. I I love the take of Alfred as like an old queen. Like I genuinely yeah, like he's so, so he's so good in the, especially in this movie he's so good. That's what kind of strikes me weird about the the Vicky apartment scene is yeah. Alfred finally convinces him that maybe this is something that could that could work for him so maybe he needs to let oh. her in on this. Yeah, and she's smart enough to handle it and yeah. I find it kind of weird, but it's also endearing at the same time. Like he has such a hard, like he, that's the one thing he can't do is tell someone that he is doing what he's doing. Mm -hmm. But I'm also on the grounds of like, dude, you like, you beat the shit out of people nightly. Like, is it really that hard for you to tell her that you're Batman? Right. Well, uh, he just met her. She's uh, investigating Batman, wanting to arguably expose him. True. who, Who is Batman? So, and uh, what he's doing is illegal. So, you know, he's taking a big risk trusting her with Mm -hmm. that information, right? I like her apartment. It's full of light, lots of natural light, very different. Lots of space. Lots of space. They both say that for some reason. It's a great, that's, I love that actually. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Two two sides of the same coin, I guess. Didn't she just move to Gotham? (laughs) Yeah, right. She, she found quick. this great apartment in the two weeks she's been in Gotham. On a photojournalist's salary. In the yeah. <laughs> well, she shoots for Vogue and stuff. I'm That's sure she true. Makes time. She was in Time Magazine, man. She made, she, she's making That's good money. That's true. She just saved up while she was in the Cordo Maltese. Uh, yeah, this <laughs> sequence is incredible. Uh, My it, favorite performance from Michael Keaton in this movie mm-hmm. is this scene. I, I'm going to go against the grain on this one, guys. You uh, hate this scene? Well... More from a logical standpoint, oh, I don't sure. mind the performance, but I have no idea what Bruce is has in mind when he walks out and starts talking. You know, Joker mm-hmm. comes in, he starts telling this story about a guy named Jack, right? Which sort of oh, this is where the scene falls apart. The let's yeah, get nuts it does, bit is is it I, does not make he has no plan, and I'm thinking okay, he's trying to play mind games he's gonna say you know i know that you used to be jack you know he's kind of saying like i I know know who you are are." yeah yeah and he starts telling the story and his plan is to just get shot i guess and just hope that he shoots him in the chest purely from an purely from an i enjoy watching this scene i i really (laughs) enjoy watching it makes no sense logically but it is so fucking entertaining yeah i mean i love the performance but uh, you got his lights out But who feels like in that that section right there when he starts? So you want to get nuts? Yeah. He he channeled his inner Beetlejuice right oh, there. Yeah. Oh, one thousand percent. Oh, yeah. That was one hundred yeah. Beetlejuice right the, there. Well, no, it's it's he, he's got three little segments to that line, and mm-hmm. it's um. So you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Let's it's, get that, nuts. it's when he says, <laughs> "Come on," nuts. it's like, "Come on, <laughs> let's get nuts." But he has that bit <laughs> where he says, "I love I, I love this exchange where he says, um." 
this guy Jack Bad Seed hurt people. I like him already. Like it's just <laughs> it's very funny. Yeah, it is. And, and I like that the Joker is a little taken aback by again he again this is the common theme here is nobody really knows who Bruce Wayne is in mm-hmm. Gotham for some some reason Bruce and Wayne Nespa. Yeah, like J- Joker knows who he is. Yeah, but. It's another one of those things where it's like he doesn't know what stature of a person he is within Gotham either. Oh, this is also um, the reveal that he's murdered Alicia. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, she she committed suicide. Sorry. She threw herself. I don't believe her. that. I think he threw her out of the bill. I think he, I think that was his way of I think he tells her she went out a window, but I think he I think he threw her out a window. He's, you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. <laughs> When he says that and he smacks that that mask, like yeah. it looks like that would hurt his hand. It's scary. There are two specific moments in this movie where I feel like Jack Nicholson hurt himself. One is that one because that mask looks like it's pretty sturdy yeah. and he breaks it to pieces. The other is when they're dancing in the museum and he hits that statue that he's oh, uh, yes. imitating. Yeah. And yeah. you can hear like it sounds like it's iron Clang. when it hits the ground. Yeah. And when the way he hits it looks like it would have fucked his wrist up yeah. big time. After that, we we get the we get the we get the famous line from the Joker that it seems like as a kid nobody ever said it correctly mm. about the uh you know the devil in the pale moonlight. I mean, Never no, dance. I don't think any kid. Did we, you just say it? Correctly? You didn't even say it right. Just <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm paraphrasing. I'm not reading the whole thing. Is we'll save it for quotes. <laughs> but it's like nobody said it right as a kid because you know everybody tried to say it. But I I love that line. I, I, I mean, because it. it it shows up later. I think it's I mean, a great line, but it's a weird it's a weird screenwriting thing because and Batman yeah. Returns does the same thing where um there is a reveal there's a character identity reveal based on someone saying a quote that doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Like it is Well, they they need to establish that line earlier. He needs to say it I agree. once one at least one more time to one of his victims. He should have said it to Carl killed. Grissom. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and yeah. then and then you hear it, you know, so because, yeah, you don't hear it until this point in the film. Right. So, it, you're it's, right. It's, it's not established. It's an incredible line, but it also it was weird because rewatching Batman Returns recently. There's that bit where they have the, you know, uh, uh, mistletoe is deadly if you eat it, but a kiss is even deadlier if you mean it. And I was like, that's just a poem Daniel Waters came up with while he was writing this. You know, <laughs> it's it doesn't really mean anything, but it works for the. I mean, it's the same thing as like, oh, I know he's Batman because he kisses like Bruce Wayne. <laughs> you know, like yeah. it's a very similar. <laughs> Hello. But it it does have the it does have the advantage of being beautifully delivered by Jack Nicholson, and also kind of being a toss off. I kind of like that he's like. I don't have to justify this to you. He's just like, I just like the sound of it. You know? Yeah. Ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Let's get to some of the other quotes in the movie. You're going to need a bigger quote. Oh, man, dude. I got so many. I have a million. I, have a million. <laughs> I don't, Jason, were there any taglines for Batman? Yes, there were. Hold on. It had one that I found. Just one. Okay. All right. The tagline for this was, only one will claim the night. Justice is always darkest before the dawn. Oh, interesting. I've never... Wow, and Christopher it. Nolan reused that one. <laughs> yep. And I looked it up, and it said it, said it was for Batman 1989. There was, a, there was a rejected poster for this movie that said, in the near future, God, you know, which is very strange oh. on the... But yeah. Uh, I found that while I was, like, looking up stuff earlier. Well, I mean, we just talked about the scene, but, I mean, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Let's get nuts. I, I, I mean, I've got one uh, Grissom where he says, "That's all, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. That's all." I love that line. <laughs> um, I love. Okay, so it's it's real daddy vibes. But when Bruce Wayne says, "You're a real nice girl, and I like you a lot," but right now, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. That is a good one. I also uh, love her delivery of he took the film. <laughs> <laughs> I like. Uh, this is back when Joker still jack and they're talking he said uh decent people shouldn't live here they'd be happier somewhere else that's a great line <laughs> um i also love uh, uh Knox, the uh uh wayne the guy's a stiff he's a rich stiff but you could do better <laughs> <laughs> yes he is tragically like it friend zoned through this whole movie uh i also another another uh line from him look at this mirror maybe it should be bruce vane <laughs> <It's Bane. laughs> jenny do you have anything <laughs> Um, wait till they get a load of me. Oh, yeah, so good. Uh, Great one. Yeah. I got, 
I got one. Can someone tell me what kind of world we live that we live in where a man dressed as a bat gets all my press? <laughs> <laughs> that and then it's this town needs an enema right after that. I have a quote from Bat Dance. <laughs> <laughs> When uh, Bruce says, she's great, isn't she? And then Prince goes, oh, yeah, I want to bust that body. <laughs> and now which we know he, he, was. Yeah. he was. Which he did. He certainly he did, was. in fact. Yes. Uh, never rub another man's rhubarb. Great line. Make no <laughs> sense. Also, no same, sense whatsoever. Also, uh, uh, another rooster in the hen house. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, you Jenny have one of yours? Yeah, I had a... Uh... Antoine got a little hot under the collar. So good. <laughs> and uh, this one's coming up. Why didn't anyone tell me he had one of those things? Okay. <laughs> that the line del- that scene. So I recently I got to see this like six months back at a socially distanced screening, and it was the first time I have ever seen this movie on a big screen. It made me so happy, and it was. Uh, but like, I'd never caught this before. But when he is walking off of the float after Batman's taken off all of his balloons. He just has this kind of like, like this doesn't yeah. translate to, to, to audio the but podcast. He literally but yeah. has a, he has a, what the fuck, fuck. <laughs> look on his face. Like, come it's, on. Like, it is so funny. Yeah. He is really bummed out when his balloons get stolen. He's crestfallen. <laughs> His delivery of that too is very good because, like, it almost seems like that line could have been like scripted as something else. Yeah. But that was one like where Nicholson botched his line and they kept it. Like, and, why didn't somebody tell me he had a plane? It was like uh, one of those things. Like, it's, it has very, it has the same energy as Tony Stark built this in a cave with a box of scraps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have one more. Uh, it's one where he meets uh, Vicky at the uh, uh, museum. Uh-huh. She says, you're insane. He says, I thought I was a Pisces. Oh, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's just like the, the quick response. You're like, oh, I love that. My, my girlfriend's favorite line in the movie is, a little song, little dance, Batman's head on a lance. <laughs> Tell me, what do you know about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything uh, about Batman. I like when she asks him what he wants, and he goes, my face on the one dollar bill. The bill. You must be joking. <laughs> Do I look like I'm joking? <laughs> joking. And, and he her, gets that real her response face. to that is so. She's, she's like, yeah. well. <laughs> oh, again, there's I, camp in this movie. Like all absolutely. Over it. Yeah. I got. I got one that's gonna come later. It's uh, we're like Beauty and the Beast, of course. But if anyone else calls you Beast, I'll rip their lungs out. <laughs> A I lot to say about that scene. He, he talks about ripping lungs out twice in this oh, movie. Oh, yeah. They have handed them their lungs by now. Where's the Batman? He's at home washing his tights. <laughs> I like, we talked about it earlier, but I like Knox and hello legs. That's a good one. What was the, what's the line the mayor has where he's just like, they won't be scared if you put Grissom behind bars. I promise that, remember? Yeah. <laughs> I want parades, floats, the whole schmear. <laughs> Unfortunately, we talked about Billy D. Williams. He doesn't get a lot to do in this, no. but the stuff that he does get to do, like when the mayor is hounding him and he's mm-hmm. on the phone trying to handle yeah. all this stuff, and he just looks at him and goes, we're on it. <laughs> like, it's yeah, just like, get the it, hell yeah. off me. Um, I, I I like the Joker uh, in, at uh, City Hall when he takes uh, the gangster guy out and he goes, yeah. the pen is truly mightier than the sword. <laughs> that one's good. good. Uh, this town needs an enema. I like that. I think Eric might have said that one. Um, I think but, we could just do an episode on quotes of the Joker from this movie. Yeah, pretty much. As my plastic surgeon always said, if you gotta go, go with a smile. <laughs> but I think the one that we probably still use more often than any of the others is, "I'm Batman." I'm Batman. I mean, Everybody. it's become a cultural thing now. I, I mean, just the, to the point where I feel like it was a note that Christian Bale had to say it to like cement his status as Batman. Like, I think yeah. like you're not Batman until you say it. Yeah. And Batman begins. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's the, there's a reason why uh, that's, I think maybe the, the thing that Kevin Conroy is asked to say the most at conventions is I am Batman, you know, like <laughs> it's just so iconic. You have to. Definitely. So after all this goes down, we get Batman's murderous rampage that Eric brought up earlier. Yeah. Well, first he he does a little research. He dresses like Steve Jobs, and <laughs> yes, thank you. I had that as one of my notes. <laughs> he wears the tactile neck from yes. Archer. 
And he, and he realizes that Joker is our Joe Chill here. Joker killed mm-hmm. his parents. Mm-hmm. So he's ready to... I gotta go to work. He, he's gotta go to work, and he's gotta <laughs> go just murder everyone in his path yeah. at this point. And that, as unlikely as it is that yeah. someone would keep a, their 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 armor or whatever in a vault like that, I mean, it, it's still fucking cool that he shot. keeps his armor in a vault like that. Like, And I almost think that, I mean... They're trying to dial up the cool every movie with showing how many different suits he has, but mm-hmm. just the fact that in this one they they focus on the one suit in the in the armor chest and like which has got to smell everything. like vinegar or like like it's uh. got to just be <laughs> awful. <laughs> it's like, can you take this to the cleaners, Alfred? But like, how many times have we seen a suiting up montage in a movie now? And like, this yeah. is like yeah. very much the genesis of that, like seeing and, them getting the yeah all their and the buckle, outfit. you know, do the buckle, oh, so do thing. I love great. the pan up as he kind of leans backwards. It's so good. You get to see the whole bat. Oh, that's I love that shot. That's one of my favorite shots in the movie. Absolutely. And then it's when he starts shooting everybody because I thought my whole life uh, Batman didn't kill people, but in this movie he does. Well, according to uh, Scott uh, Zack Snyder, if you think Batman doesn't kill people, you're living in a fantasy world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently, Batman says that drops the f bomb in the Snyder cut of Justice League. That was another. Oh. Yeah, so can't wait. It's gonna be sick. <laughs> Comics are a fantasy world, yeah. so well, it's correct. Well, I mean, it's the, okay. In the, Nol- <laughs> yeah, in the Nolan films, that's what how the Joker gets him because he won't break his rule. Yes. But in, in this, he's shooting machine guns and dropping bombs. He has machine he guns. Yeah. yeah. The I I I mean I I question the structural integrity of the tires on the Batmobile, but the, the I love the. I love the little animated effect where the little the little bomb pellet drops out of the yeah. tire. Yeah. I do love the shields thing, and we we, yeah. we touched on the Tesla bit of the Batmobile. Oh. The fact that it can drive itself, it's got these shields that put over it yeah. with the with the bombs, and uh, yeah, but blows the shit out of this <laughs> Axis chemicals. It's very uh, very un Batman. It's uh, yeah. you know obviously the killing part, but just the just the destruction part. He's mm-hmm. more surgical. I you know yes. Batman is more of a surgical guy. He's not yeah. gonna blow up a whole building trying to get Joker. It just, well, and here's the thing about here's the thing about it being an eighties movie. I mean like that, that's where it really comes in. I mean, it's a, it's also kind of a James Bond move is send in my remote controlled car and destroy. I'm a blunt instrument and destroy all this stuff. <laughs> but like yeah. in eighties movies, I think uh, audiences in the eighties w- would not accept of, you know, I mean, jumping ahead a little bit, Batman kills the Joker. And you know, this is like, I don't know that the audience at that time would accept, uh, you know, after we've seen John McClane chuck dudes out of windows and stuff like that, like, I just, I don't know that it. Yeah, we were in a time where, like, you had to you had to deliver on what you were showing mm-hmm. throughout the movie. So if the Joker did not, you know, did not get taken out at the end, right. people probably would have revolted at that. Although maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Like, I mean, Chunk doesn't strangle the Fratelli brothers. <laughs> <laughs> But I think, yeah, I agree with Josh. I mean, I think people would have probably been mad if he would have just threw hand, the back cuffs on him and took him to Arkham. Right, which is my favorite thing. Of, one of my favorite things about The Dark Knight uh, is that, yeah. that you allow these stories to continue. I mean, you don't, I, I don't know. It's don't kill the whole, one of the main villains, villains yeah. of Batman history. Yeah. You know. Or you pull a Batman the animated series and just have the Joker fall off a series of high things and just never find him, which I, <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that get out of jail free card. How about the helicopter scene when Joker shows up because Batman just has now realized Missed that me. Joker. But that miniature of that helicopter is so old school Batman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the also, hell? Also, Batman, when he whips around to look at him, his belt falls yeah. like three feet. Like it falls like down his waist. <laughs> His pants fall down. <laughs> I do remember being very surprised when you get the reveal that he hasn't been in the Batmobile the whole time. I love that. Was going that. On. I yeah. actually do do really. He's like, I didn't do it. My car did. So we've gotten to the the big finale of all of this, where where Joker's going to dump twenty million in cash on the crowd of Gotham. Looks like they could all use it. Where he shuts the mayor's press conference up by like just shoving the screen away is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is classic Joker. And that's a very like yeah like almost like a sixty six style yes, uh, Joker absolutely, um, but and I like that even when when he takes over the one side of it, you've got the mayor and everybody else looking at the other screen. Yeah, what are they looking at? As if they're looking at the Joker <laughs> yeah. talking. <laughs> yeah, it's all for the gag. Yeah, it's all for the gag. 
And of course, the people at home are watching one screen, so none of that would work. It only works inside the control room of the TV yeah. station. The right. old dukeroo. <laughs> I also love the fact that he says, I've taken off my makeup. And the fact of the matter is, is his makeup is always there. Like, yes. I, I think the juxtaposition of him saying that and he knowing that he's he's permanently got makeup on now is kind of cool. And the joke is that like people think they can trust him because he's made himself a known entity when he really hasn't like i i do really like that that he's the whole concept of yeah of putting flesh colored makeup over mm-hmm. his joker like clown like face is brilliant just and they use it well uh you know like you said with the water splash with mm-hmm. the head wipe like little like you know his true colors coming through that kind of so you know, i I, I watched a little behind the scenes about this cuz that was something that always amazed me about this movie mm-hmm. is when he's got the flesh color makeup on and wipes it away to, to find the, the, the white Joker makeup underneath because that's actually his skin at this point. Yes. So yeah. the, they had to apply the foam latex and all of that to Jack Nicholson. And then in order to get that, cause they wanted to have that effect, basically the flesh colored makeup he had on, if anything touched it, it ruined it. Wow. So he had to be very careful when they set him <sighs> up in those scenes because it actually is White underneath with that yeah. makeup. Like, I used to think that he took the little handkerchief and actually wiped so white makeup on his yeah. head, like, mm-hmm. as the effect. Yeah. But no, like, he actually has the white on underneath, and they did, like, an oil-based thing over the top of it so he could wipe it away. Which is so, and it, and it looks, it it's flesh-colored, but it still looks weird and unnatural. He looks like when you watch those colorized versions of old black and white movies. you know, Or like I mean? uh, Rudy Giuliani uh, yeah, or, yeah, at a press yeah. conference. <laughs> I'm so glad I wasn't the only one who thought of that. I <laughs> Man, I thought of Trump a lot in this movie. <laughs> I don't know why, dude. I just, you know. Oh, rewatch Batman Returns and you'll be shocked by Max Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But the cool thing about this new parade scene is we get our other favorite thing as a kid. We get the bat wing the fucking bat wing dude like this thing and i love that it is exactly the shape of the bat symbol i love that batman has like a weird scissor device that is like perfectly designed to grab three balloons (laughs) in a row (laughs) with with little rivets in the middle so that each each cable can fit in it (laughs) yeah it's very specific I feel like this scene was so good in this movie. It is. You're, you're, we're, we're coming up to the close of this movie, and from this point on, when the Batwing shows up, he's firing on the Joker in the street. Like I feel like that was so iconic, and, and that's kind of why we got the showdown in the middle of the street in the Nolan mm-hmm. Dark Knight movie. Absolutely. Oh, sure. It's because they, they knew that they had something that worked here. Come on and hit me. Yeah, and, and Nolan, Nolan did his part and and up the ante there with the flipping over semi which Mm -hmm. i love that was i love that but again um batman opening fire on a crowd of people uh shooting missiles at a a human being like it's just very it's hard for me to deal with now it still is great it's a great 80s action beat and with all the positioning stuff that he's got and everything and the rockets and the machine guns like he, still manages to hit he, nothing. He locks onto the Joker and then fires two missiles that hit like on either side. But that shot <laughs> yeah. of that shot of of Jack Nicholson standing still while two like whatever they're called ground squibs, you know, like two charges yeah. explode uh on either side of him. That's such a great shot. Well, and see and, that scene work that, you know, that that the the Nolan version of that Mm -hmm. works so much better because that uh, that Joker, the Heath Ledger Joker knows that that Batman won't kill him. Right. So he stands there in, in confidence knowing that he won't, but in this situation, that Batman is furious because he also knows he won't kill him. Like he's screaming at himself for not running him over. Right. (laughs) So it, it it just works so much better. And and when, when you have that conflict going, Here, it's more just uh, Joker is just fearless and, you know, he, Batman missed, it's, which is weird. It works, but it's it's an odd scene. Yeah. Does the Joker say, I, I, I forgot to write down, but doesn't he, when he's looking at him, didn't he say, come on, you son of a Come bitch, on, you gruesome son of a which I said to my father. <laughs> now, I want to I ask Jenny if she, like, did you genuinely forget about him pulling the the 12 foot revolver out of his pants. So Cause you funny. laughed so I, hard. I don't know if I had <laughs> forgotten about it, but it just struck me as so funny last night. And 
Like, what the hell is in that it's thing? Such yeah. a yes. good joke. <laughs> it, it, it takes down it. the bat wing in one yeah, shot. Yeah, it does. So this is another thing that, like, they felt, I think they had, they felt like they had to uh, justify in the comic book adaptation of the movie. Like, when he gets hit, Batman goes, like, it's an explosive shell or something like that. But it's, it is very uh, strange because he literally just pulls out, like, a revolver and takes down this fucking jet. Yeah, after, after the arsenal Batman had just unloaded on the Joker, he takes the bat wing out with one bullet. It's bullets, my only weakness. <laughs> Curses. How did you know? Yeah, the, the gun went from a 44 caliber to like a 50 cal. It's so... Oh, it shoots straight through the engine. It's so funny. <laughs> but I love the gag when you get into the bell tower and he just pushes the barrel in and it... it, it, it. It's so great. Yeah, right when they're getting ready to go in the bell tower because the, the bat wing crashes. I know y'all were talking about that earlier, but to me, that scene does not hold up because I've noticed it since forever. Yeah, I think the well, bat wing still looks good. I think the cars in the foreground. The cars and, and yeah, it going up on the stairs miniature. is like, ooh, that's not But I, the flames, I love miniatures. You know, I really can, do. Oh, me too. Oh, I do I too, it. but just like, it's like if there was, if you were starting to pick Nick Pick, which we'll oh, be later sure. when we get to that segment. That right there, every time I watch it, I go, oh, I got to turn my head. <laughs> I want to watch it. But yeah, I love the whole gun collapse thing. And she can't find Batman in the Batwing and Joker takes her up in the cathedral. Sure. Which it's funny because the Batwing, the Batwing crashes and slides down a full like city block, block. And, and crashes into this tower. And uh, Joker and, and Vicky are both back to where the floats are, which seems like it's a good ways down the street. And it takes Vicky no time at all to get to where the, the, yeah. the, bat, the Batwing crashes. Yeah, she's a speedster, actually. Yeah. This movie, yeah, this movie just... slightly introduced the speed force. It, yes, it introduced uh, one of the flashes through the multiverses. Yeah. It's the Vicky Vale flash. <laughs> Quickie Vale. <laughs> Quickie Vale. <laughs> so one thing that bothers me about the bell tower scene is we see Joker and Vicky go up and then Batman follows. Where the fuck did all these other goons come from? So there there is a there is a reason for this behind the scenes. They, okay, I'd love to hear it. The producers forced Tim Burton to uh, add like they they rewrote the ending as they went like they didn't like the original ending the producer was like I want it to end in a bell tower this is John Peters the guy who famously told Kevin Smith that I want you to write a Superman movie where he doesn't fly or wear a suit uh, and he has to fight a giant spider uh, so he was he was literally like apparently there was there were days where they were shooting in the cathedral where Jack Nicholson would ask Tim Burton what the fuck am I doing what's my motivation and Tim's just like I don't know they're making me do this uh, uh, so it makes sense because he dances around with Vicky to a point where I'm like, all right, come on, get on well, with it, guys. Like call, it goes on for a little while. He has to call his guys to tell them to bring a helicopter to airlift him out. He goes up, him, Vicky, and Bruce all go up into the cathedral. Then he drops the bell that keeps anybody else from going in. And somehow there's like 30 guys waiting up there. Could they have come in on a helicopter? Can we just have like they? reach He's, for that answer? No, I'm because sure. the, he called the helicopter in. And it the only thing big. I could come up with was they entered the like the Joker knew he was gonna go up in there, so he sure. sent them in before he went in. Okay, here's yeah, uh, if we're going with Eric's head cannon, we can say like he they drop them off, then he's like, all right, we'll circle back in ten or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the exchange when he when he calls the chopper and he says yeah. uh, five minutes, better make it ten. Yeah. <laughs> Like no no one could get no one could get to the top of this tower but in this ten minutes. This is my part so where Nathan just yeah brought that up about the bell falling. Yeah. All right, it knocks all the stairs. Well, how the hell does Batman keep going? I mean, is he? I think he'd play? already made. Oh, because he steps out of the way of the bell. Yeah, but it dropped. It hit, knocked all those stairs down on the way down. He's, He's Batman. Good. He also decides to use the stairs instead of his grappling hook. <laughs> so <laughs> who cares? <laughs> there you go. Where, where in every comic movie cartoon every time he travels sure he's shooting he's shooting that can we appreciate so. that commissioner gordon at least tries to lift the bell <laughs> like <laughs> looks like i can't move this giant yeah. metal bell <laughs> all right let's go let's go he is hell-bent on being on scene mm -hmm. for all this shit that's going down but does nothing while he's there he is no. useless useless <laughs> no 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 useless is the goon that's there that jumps behind batman and falls to the floor <laughs> 
that was the most useless goon through the whole movie. Well, I mean, my favorite just, part of this whole scene is when Batman gets up in, in there and he can't find anything, but he hears Joker talking and goes, Shall seems I truly have a bat in my belfry. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we dance? <laughs> um, is, and now, are we, is that Lawrence that he's fighting? Because uh, whoever that goon is, no, is handing it to Batman, dude. No, dude he's he, throwing him around. He fights, he fights swole Ray Charles for a little while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, Lawrence is the one who goes through the floor. Yeah. He's the one who lunges at oh, Batman okay. and goes through the floor of the, th- uh, the thing. What's the but, yeah. weird thing that shoots out of his wrist whenever the sword I know guy, it's it, like a weird like he has a bicycle pedal that comes out of yeah the outlet. just as a, yeah and as it like comes out of nowhere punch. yeah yeah I, I do um, love I love the punch sound effects in this movie the, yeah like the yeah. kind of crunch that happens whenever he's like fighting that one dude um, well while, while the the goons being there kind of throws me off but I mean like Jason just said and, and we get you know buff Ray Charles handing it to Batman for yeah. So like, I like that it shows that Batman does have a, 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 a side of like some people, depending on your strength can get best him. Well, he's well, also, also like, keep in mind, he just survived a, a, a crash in a jet. Right. So, yeah. But yeah. I do like the Batman takes some damage here. He's starting to look kind of rough he around the edges. He trips over the pews. Like he's like out of it. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He, he acts like, like me up. coming home drunk. Like, <laughs> Hey, why is this cathedral in such terrible shape? Well, it's like everything else in Gotham City. Like, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. They just keep you know throwing band aids on broken arms. Yeah, we needed like a a Ghostbusters style scene of them halfway up the stairs out of breath. Because this is insane. Like, <laughs> what yeah. floor are we on? Of this building is ridiculous. We do get Joker's weird foot fetish thing where he kisses Vicky <laughs> and then drops it. Well, it does affect you know, that, those flights of stairs. At least do affect Vicky. Like she's out of it by the mm-hmm. time we get to the top of this thing, where Joker is just dragging her around. Well, that's part um, of the that's part of the complaint I think with Vicky yeah. is that she is so exhausted. She has no at this agency point. by the end of the movie. She yeah, she's got nothing left. She's just basically like a prop. The only thing she does in the point. finale is hit Knox with a car. <laughs> hey, and can we give Knox some some uh, credit for? fighting yeah. off and 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 he he's got he's got his covid mask on yes he and, masks and, up. and and what does he use what does he use jason a bat a bat, a bat. yeah the true batman of the film because he is the real batman <laughs> he is, yeah. he's got a mask and a bat we stan alexander knox in this household <laughs> and i love that thing where she's like you know kissing him and she says oh and purple and then she gets down, and you just see that look pulls, on Jack Nichols' face. Is like, whoa, it's going to happen. But I love that she kisses his shoulder, and then she like, pl- pl- like she yeah. pulls like a piece of lint. <laughs> out of her that is a great, yeah. Like she and Batman didn't plan this ahead of time, so like if he was like still like, you know, preparing or like he maybe passed out, like he's because he's from his fight, would she have like blown the Joker to like keep him <laughs> distracted? Like, hey. <laughs> Oh god! Ooh, this is just this going is off the, the rails. This is the dirtiest episode we have ever done. <laughs> this episode myself. needs a special tag <laughs> on it to say. Yeah. But yeah, and then we get him punching Joker in the face, and I love where he's beating his ass, mm-hmm. and he punches. And I love the scene where he spits out the uh, fake chattering teeth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love the movie that. Needed, I, still... I think the movie needed more of that shtick. Like, I think that yeah. we, we get so many, like, little goofy uh, joke shop gags in this scene. You know, the removable hand and the, the fake teeth and the goofy glasses. Would you hit a man with glasses? So good. Yeah, that's my favorite one is the hit a man with glasses. <laughs> I, I, listen, I was a kid when I killed your parents. <laughs> <laughs> that forgives how, me of all my sins. Yeah. How, does that, how does he know that he killed his parents here? I think it's, I, I genuinely think yep. he's lying. I think he's, like, pretending that he knows. Okay. What he's talking about. Yeah. I cuz yeah cuz well, no, really he, dr- s- he had the dream he had the dream sequence. No, no, no. Whole, but I, I know that think, I know that Bruce knows, but how does how does Joker Jack know knows. that yeah. he didn't know he told him. He said he You said, killed my parents and he says uh, you, I, I, yeah. yeah. And he says I yeah. was a kid when I killed your parents, which you it's know. It's a really weird line. Yeah. I don't know. It, yeah. it doesn't cuz again He's like, Joker, it's fine. How many times has the Joker killed someone's parents? You know what I mean? Exactly. You guys bring up good points, but we haven't established like, okay, so Jack knows who Bruce Wayne is mm-hmm. because he says it in Vicky's apartment. Bruce Wayne, Nespa. Oh, um, so maybe I mean, 
he probably knows that he took out Bruce Wayne back when he was a kid. And mm-hmm. we've just gotten the reveal that Batman and Bruce Wayne are one and the same. So maybe that did click in his head where he's like, oh, yeah, I killed your parents when I was younger. I like that. Was uh, was he robbing people and like stealing jewelry and stuff to help pay for his chemistry courses in college? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, chemistry... the, the Joker has multiple multiple degrees in this movie. <laughs> He's a real renaissance man. He yeah. sure is. <laughs> but uh, you're right. I mean, I, this whole this whole part of the, the the finale of the movie feels a little tacked on when mm-hmm. they're hang, dangling off the side of the tower. And, and, you know, Batman's pretty useless here. I mean, but... And Joker clearly has no written dialogue in this scene because he's true, just... Like, it's, it's just Jack Nicholson going like, hoo, 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 hoo. Like, but when he turns around and starts shaking his ass to to Vicky and Batman, hilarious. oh my god, it is hilarious. Yes. They sure don't make him like they used make to. Make him like they used to. <laughs> hey, I love that line. I love that I love that, that he line. calls him Batsy. Like, that's just such a Cesar oh, Romero, yeah. like, old school. And that's something that I think was really taken forward with the animated series version. Absolutely. Absolutely. And well, all that stuff that we like from this, all the all the Joker gags, the, the gun with the the flag that comes out that says bang like oh. you know all those little jokery gags and and playful stuff is really further developed i mean obviously there's some of yeah. that previously but they really lean into that in the animated that's series. the one damselly bit that works for me with uh with vicky vale is like if someone pulled a trigger in my face and a little flag popped out i also yeah. would pass out <laughs> yeah i would simply pass away <laughs> it's a great guy <laughs> It's a great Joker gag. It know, is. It classic. Is. He's done it so many times, you know. The helicopter has arrived now, so Joker's like, what does he say? Uh, Time to retire. Feel, Feel free, free to, to drop in. Drop in. <laughs> Sometimes I just kill myself. And then Batman's like, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but this is another contraption we haven't seen that he uses this whole time. Mm-hmm. The other thing that gets me is, yeah, like, uh, he has so much stuff clip to this utility belt behind like oh. behind this cape yeah like. <laughs> joker joker turning to the gargoyle and asking what are you laughing at yes. oh, so yes. him almost slipping and then just kind of like giggling because he almost fell off of the like it's mm-hmm. the whole sequence is it's from a screenwriting standpoint very lazy but from a performance standpoint just a uh, joy to watch yeah Oh, yeah. And I like that you get the fake out. I mean, you think, you know, Batman and Vicky are, are kind of, I mm-hmm. mean, we, we know that our heroes aren't going to, you know, fall to their death here, but that last little scare of them falling down the bell oh, tower. Also, how strong is, how strong is the Joker? Cause he yanks both of them over the edge. Like, oh yeah. yeah. Full body. <laughs> like, well, well, not even that, even when uh, he bolos the gargle mm-hmm. to his leg, he holds on I mean, for a he's while. Holding his on for, I mean, that's a, concrete statue mm-hmm. how many hundreds of pounds is that way but he couldn't hold on long enough not to end up in a vat of acid yeah yeah mm. that's why i said well, batman was holding him he wasn't holding he was, I, that's why i said batman shook the hand get the fuck off me mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> be gone <laughs> be gone i mean one thing one thing you can't underestimate joker's grip strength you mm. know yeah he got that <laughs> he got that kung got, fu grip oh yeah I just the the one thing that uh, also is is the is is the face of the Joker as he falls. Does anybody else have kind of a little problem with that? Oh, the well, he does this weird little thing with his lips where he goes like, like he kind of like. Yeah, but but not only that, as he fall, but as he's fallen, just I, I guess I think the that's animated also, words. like the Batman yes, at the beginning. I, it's a really it's an odd yeah, shot. Yeah, it looks a little odd there. It's yeah, it looks it's no Hans yeah. Gruber. You know, no. but that oh, scream definitely. is incredible. The, ah! Like it's yeah. it's pure terror, man. That uh, laugh bag of laughs or whatever oh. at the end scared the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I have a thing about that. My grandma would go to like garage sales and flea markets, and she'd come home. She said, "Hey, I bought this little bag for you," and I'm like, "What is it?" She said, "Shake it," and I shook it. It was that bag. I hate that. It started going, <laughs> <laughs> and I had it, and then it was in the movie when I saw the movie, yeah. and I'm like, this is the Joker bag. <laughs> but she picked it up just because she thought it was funny because it laughed, That's and I'm like, so oh, wild. Geez, they, made, they made those everywhere. After that, it, I, they had the little, wow. the little laughing Joker Yeah, bags. we really do but live was, in a society. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, okay. That's so weird. This whole press conference at the end where they've, 
welcomed Batman in as vigilante justice to mm-hmm. Gotham City definitely doesn't sit well with me now. But as a kid, you kind of get where they're going with this. But now I'm like, yeah. no, there's no fucking way. They'd be looking. F- there would be a manhunt looking for this guy but to al- no end. Also, there's how about Batman's like eighth grade level like writing for that note like if the forces of evil should rise again like <laughs> very old, old timey and i love it um yeah there was actually there's a scene that was cut that was never filmed as far as i can tell but the the way that batman like because originally in the in the script the police actually came after batman like they found him at the bottom of the bell tower and they were going to try to like round him up because he was near the joker's body and they pulled back the cape and Alexander Knox was underneath it. And he's like, do you think I'll make page one or something like that? Like he was, he was like, he was wow. cover for Batman's I kind of escape. like that. I love I it. I, I like that. Yeah. I, it's very goofy. It's very, you know, well, it's also great Superman. to have Knox kind of help Batman after yes. he's been trying to yeah. expose him the whole time and realize, you know, it kind of echoes the whole Harvey Dent and Batman collaboration mm-hmm. that happens in dark Knight. I, I, I like that. Aspect oh, sure. Of, yeah. I can see that. Uh, um, the, the closing scene of this really, this is where the score doesn't work too well for me. Oh, like, I love it. I love it as it goes up the building. It's, it doesn't, it's like, it, it, to like me, it. this part of the score does not sound, it sounds more like a Superman cue than a Batman. A one. little bit, but I like how triumphant it is. Yeah. I mean, it's not until you cut to the credits and that's when the actual dark Knight theme mm-hmm. starts to play. Um, but I, like when the music starts playing as you're panning up the building and then you see him in the skyline yeah, uh, the looking at the bat symbol, I just got Superman vibes from that. And I was, I felt like it was completely out of place. We should have played, they should have played bat dance as the, yeah, as the camera, as it like zooms in. It could have been dancing. Skyline. It had Roof Prince oh, we like on the other rooftop <laughs> dancing. That would have been cool. Yeah. Prince dancing in the background would have been great. Uh, Speaking of bat dance. Bam, 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 bam. Have you guys seen this video? It's incredible. Oh, I've it's seen so the video long. A few times. It is a. I'm just gonna play a segment of it because number one, I don't want to get copyrighted, but part of it, it is, is insane. Prince is in like his graffiti bridge, long hair, five o'clock shadow look too, which is so dope. So sexy. Yeah. I, I never noticed joke. before that he's the one playing all the instruments in the video too, which he makes sense. He plays all the instruments on the album. Yeah. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> but, like, I want to get to the dancers because this is like this. This video is fucking insane. Get the funk up! <laughs> so Prince, Prince had an interesting concept for this album. I'll say. Have you ever looked at the... <laughs> I tried to get some of my friends to do this at their wedding. I'm just going to have to do it for mine someday. There you go. And as you can see, this video goes on for six, almost seven minutes. Yeah. If you do, Nathan, I want an invitation. Yes, sir. Go, go, go with a smile. Go with a smile. But I, lo- I love that they sampled a bunch of stuff from the movie and threw it in there, well, So too. what's interesting I mean. is if you look at the if you look at the liner notes for the soundtrack prince has written it as a as a musical essentially like each song is given to a character they write he has the liner the lyrics written out as character dialogue so mm-hmm. he wrote songs from the point of view of batman and joker and then the character you see in this music video that's like half joker half batman is a character called Gemini that he created for this, <laughs> which was meant wow. to be like the 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 balance of good and evil. Uh, so if you if you look at the at it as a concept <laughs> album, he was literally like telling this weird like there's a song called Vicky Waiting that's from Batman's perspective about how much he wants to have sex with Vicky Vale, uh, which is wow. <laughs> tells you where Prince's head up was at the for the record. Oh, we know where his oh, head I was. I know where Prince's head. You know, was. where that head was. Um, <laughs> hey, but like. Uh, yeah, it's it's so wild because he they approached Prince because Burton wanted to use Baby I'm a Star for the parade scene and Prince's uh uh agent was like, "Oh, we can j- he'll just do a whole album for you." And so <laughs> so Prince just did. He, he wrote a whole fucking concept album for Batman 89 and it's so wild because it does 
the songs almost immediately date the movie and I love them so much. Well, I mean, it was enough to rope me in because, I mean, I, I made my mom buy me the single of mm-hmm. Bat Dance. I did. I and I, I listened to it like crazy when I was a kid. There are so many aspects of this movie that on their own should not work. Mm-hmm. But this movie just still fucking works, man. Like, you, you take, like, Jack Nicholson, the most unlikeliest of actors that I think could have portrayed the Joker. Yeah. Same with Michael Keaton. And then you've got a soundtrack by Prince. Yeah. 50s aesthetic throughout the entire movie. It's like, what the hell were all these people thinking? Mm-hmm. But somehow all of this culminates in a movie that is just fucking mind-blowing. Well, man. you like, have a lot such of... Such a good movie. You have a lot of amazingly talented people i mean mm-hmm. you, yeah. you think about all the people involved and they they all brought kind of their own weird thing to it mm-hmm. um but i mean these you know danny elfman tim burton you know yeah all well, these here, people it's just everyone's at the top of their game yeah mm-hmm. exactly i have one question because during when we're looking up this thing now how would y'all have felt about an the 80s version of batman mm-hmm with Bill Murray as Batman oh, yeah. and Eddie Murphy as Robin, because that almost when, happened too. Who is Robin? Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. That was when, oh, uh, yeah. what, Her- was it Harold Ramis was attached to it for a minute? Like, I, I think, I think so. They were attached to it. And cause we even had Batman, like they were looking at Mel Gibson, Kevin Costner, Harrison Ford. Alec Baldwin at one point. There was, yeah, um, Pierce Brosnan. This is why it's interesting. I think this is a good time to call out a guy that's very much responsible for this movie even happening, which is uh, Michael Uslan, who's a producer on the movie. Um, he was a, uh, he taught a course on comic books, one of the first accredited courses on comic books for a college. And he kind of rose up through the ranks at DC Comics, writing Batman, The Shadow, and a couple other things. And in the late 70s, he was he said he wanted to make a Batman movie. So he purchased the rights, uh, he and his producing partner purchased the rights to Batman and Swamp Thing. Those were the two characters that he was like, I think these characters can be huge. Swamp Thing got a middling movie by Wes Craven. And then it took like 10 years for him to convince anybody to let him make a Batman movie. And it eventually happened. But the to this day... He is he, he he signed the greatest deal in Hollywood history. This guy is credited as an executive producer for every Batman film ever. Like wow. all the animated ones, all the Joel Schumacher ones, all the Nolan movies. He this dude gets a bit of the a, a piece of the action. Um and it was him kind of fighting for cuz every time they he would get a pitch, it was let's do a comedy, let's do you know, uh, a a weird kind of, uh, you know, take on the 40s serials or the 60s TV show. And it it was his vision that like, no, you, I want you to take this seriously. I want you to like see him as this mythical figure Um, because he'd, he'd fought his whole life for comic books to be like respected. He, you know, he argued with the Dean of the school that he was teaching at, like superheroes are our new myth. You know, you used to call it Poseidon. Now you call it Aquaman. You know, like, I need you to, like, fucking yeah. ex- respect this. And I, I think that that's a huge reason why the movie became this kind of hodgepodge of different uh, influences, because everyone has their idea of what Batman means. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Totally. Good. Well said there, Nathan. Thank you. That's I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> are, are you gonna... <laughs> well, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, the bad, the ugly. all right i'll start i love the aesthetic Mm -hmm. i love jack nicholson and i love danny elfman's score aside from the one little piece at the end that just rubs me the wrong way Mm. um but there's so like i i kind of got into it a little bit a minute ago like there's so much in this movie that shouldn't work on one level but totally works when you culminate it all together and that's that's what's so great about this movie uh, you know, prints, all that stuff. Um, the bad and the ugly, I would say, I kind of feel like I'm going to ha- rub some people the wrong way here, but the animated Batman in the beginning, I don't like. 
All right. Good night, folks. Fuck you, Josh. Bye. It's not my favorite. <laughs> More like That's Batman not- Haiti Nine. Am I right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh my god. Um, but as far as ugly, mm. uh, it's starting to feel a little dated for me. Sure. Um, uh, eventually everything will. But I mean, this is the first time that it's really kind of sunk into me. And um, one of one of the parts of this movie that makes me cringe is when he and Vicky are getting away from the goons, and he. Like Jason said, like he can't move his head, so he leans his whole body. He leans his whole body back, and he says, "How much do you weigh?" And he starts fiddling with his utility belt. Yeah, it it just looks so goofy, and I think it's it's ugly. That happens earlier in the in the chemical plant too, when the cops start rushing in after Jack's fallen into the acid. He just kind of he like walk starts to turn one way and just kind of stops. Like it's yeah, it's very it it is like Mister B, and he moves like Mister B. <laughs> Jenny, what do you got? Um, I really like Michael Keaton as Batman. Mm-hmm. I mean, as far as movie Batman go, mm-hmm. he is mine. Like, Over Christian Bale? Yeah, because like this, he was, you know, the first big screen Batman. Over Batfleck? Like, <laughs> and I kind of hold like the whole Nolan movies as a totally separate category. Sure, true. Over Batman. Will Arnett? <laughs> over <laughs> over He's Robert Batterson. Well, we'll, see. <laughs> we'll we'll see. We'll see. That, that dude's been that. impressing the shit out of me I really lately like too. So. As an actor, so um, and also all of the Joker's costumes are They're great. Sure, fantastic. That's cool. Um, the bad, I, the whole weight comment and sure. like he's a little bit of a dick. In in that, so um, that could have been his ruse to try and lead her away from the fact of like suspecting that mm. he's he's Bruce Wayne, I guess. But whatever, <laughs> he's a bat prick. Didn't age well. All right, Eric, how about you? Uh, good is the design of everything. Um, bad is Batman doesn't kill. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't like that he kills people in this. You know, the power plant and just throwing dudes down the the bell tower. No problem. Uh, ugly is the get nuts scene. Um, not the scene, but just the the logic behind what his plan is there. I mean, even if he knows he's going to get shot and he's got that thing in his shirt, what's to make him think that they wouldn't take Vicky with mm. them? It's weird that they leave her there. I, right. I, I don't understand why they do that anyway. But yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. It it doesn't it doesn't add up for me. So you know what. <laughs> Jason oh, oh um I think the my good would be you know this is the first big time superhero movie of my childhood sure. so therefore that nostalgia which is what we do the show for is part of it I mean it that movie set the bar so high for years for superhero movies until we finally got like a decent Spider-Man movie pretty much even though Blade was good but Spider Man really sent it Thank up there. You. As far Blade as, is <laughs> in a lot of ways responsible for the modern superhero boom. Absolutely. Yes, it mm-hmm. is. Yep. I mean, we had the X Men movies, but Blade really, I think, did it. But yeah, this was such a big part of your childhood mm-hmm. growing up. Like you said, I mean, I was even trying to talk my mom into trying to win the Batmobile. I mean, you don't do that nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, so I've never my, wanted my Christian Bat- Bale to be president. <laughs> 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 I don't know. He was really great in American Psycho. That's true. <laughs> he loves Huey Lewis. He does. So. Uh, my bad is just uh, some of the practical miniature things don't hold up over the time. I mean, I'm older and I know how it's done and stuff like that. So, I mean, as a kid, I never cared. Mm. But as of being an adult now, watching these this movie so many times, it just doesn't hold up. Yeah. Uh, my ugly, none. Oh. I, I, I love this movie. I Like I said, it's just it's a great movie. Top to bottom. Hell yeah. We'll close it out with our guest, Mr. Nathan Simmons, the Batman aficionado. Give us some good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, the good is, I mean, aside from the fact that it it instilled my love of superheroes from a young age, like I think genuinely I can trace back my love of comic books to watching this movie. Uh, the good would be, I like that it doesn't, it's not really worried about being silly at times. There's, I mean, like you look at the shot of Batman flying the bat wing up to the moon. That's for nobody's benefit except for the audience. And the movie is great. It's, it's so, so great. great. We didn't even talk about it. It's so great. And the movie is, is fine with being a spectacle. And I, I love that. 
Um, the bad would be the the treatment of Vicky Vale as the movie goes along. I mean, mm-hmm. she is treated. Everyone acts like Morris Day to her in Purple Rain, and like, like they might as well be <laughs> they might as well be like throwing her into a dumpster or something. Like it is, it's rough. And she she starts the movie like with her hair back and a business ponytail, looking all you know all business, ready to you know get to the bottom of things. And as the movie goes along, she kind of just becomes like an accessory that's mm-hmm. that's pulled yeah. between these two male characters. And it that's, I think, the thing that's aged the worst in this film. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ugly would be the sound that Eckhart makes when he gets shot, which is that... Bah! Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he burps through the bullet hole. Like, it's very strange. He was gassy. It, it aired out through the hole. You know, he's a little gassy that day. Had... You too many chili dogs on the Think corner. about the future. You're an A1 nut boy and Grissom knows it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um, this movie always will hold a special place in my heart. It sounds like it does for all of us. Yes. Um, that's going to do it for this episode of the VHS Files. Uh, we talked about it on the Trimmers episode. We'll go ahead and throw it out again here. We will be taking a break from the movie of the week for probably a month or so, but we <laughs> we are doing content, and we will have something out for everyone every Friday, a normal schedule. It just won't be our typical movie of the week. Episode number 20. We got this far, guys. Hey, We've gotten to 20. Good. So we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and close it out. Nathan, do you have anything you'd like to plug while you're here on the show yeah, with us? Yeah, um, check out Two Drinks and a Haunting. He's a uh, youngin. We're on all social media platforms and uh, iTunes, Spot or iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that good. That's so great. I just uh, co-hosted an episode of AIPT Comics podcast where we cover all comics news and interview uh, comic book creators. I will be on that uh, a lot coming up. So, uh, yeah, yeah, check those out. All righty, guys. Well, that's going to do it. Episode 20 in the bag. We will see you when we are back with the movie of the week. But until then, look forward to some other stuff from us coming up on the regular Friday schedule. Until we see you again. Be kind. Rewind. Rewind. Goodbye. Bye. So fuck out. (laughs) Think it over. You've been listening to the VHS Files podcast. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and drop us a rating and a review wherever you get your podcast. It was fun. Send your questions, comments, and movie suggestions to VHSFilesPodcast at gmail.com. I sing for fucks using one too many movies. Don't you blame the movies! Follow us on all social media outlets at VHS Files Podcast. Movies don't create psychos! Check out our YouTube channel for more content. Movies make psychos more creative! <laughs> Thanks for listening. Don't forget to roast me in the comments. <laughs> the drink and Drano. Ooh, okay. Within their selection is an old porno called Bat Pussy. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Batman with a giant soft pretzel. <laughs> is that not what we're reviewing tonight? I Yeah, that movie also begins with a weird close-up of a cave. <laughs> oh my god. I'd sleep in that thing. Oh my god. Batman's still running down her leg and Alfred's like blowing up his spot. Like... <laughs> oh my god. God, that's a juicy tidbit. You can hear her having an orgasm on the recording. Oh, my God. Oh, Prince in there fucking. Ooh, okay. (laughs) I can't argue with that statement, Josh. Oh, maybe I'm just sad. What? I'm sorry. It was covered in Jack Nicholson's blood. (laughs) Baby, turn the lights down. They're talking about Batman 89. But magazines sometimes is titties. (laughs) Get the Colt 45. Ooh, okay. Watch the wrong movie.